All right, so today we're going to play uh, this guy. Shipwrights of the North Sea Redux. So this is the updated version of Shem Phillips. Actually, I don't know if it's Shem Phillips' first game. So Shem Phillips, let's take a look here on the box. So Shem Phillips is the designer for, I don't know if it's all, certainly at least co-designer on everything from this publisher, Garp Hill Games. I think it's like his thing, right? Uh, and I don't know if Shipwrights of the North Sea was the first game that he ever made, but it was the first game that they ever kickstarted as Garp Hill Games. So, um, it's gonna be a fun day. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, um, uh, this was the first game that they ever kickstarted as Garp Hill Games, and uh, they basically uh, decided to redo it because all of the more recent Garp Hill Games. Uh, are better <laughs> than than Shipwrights of the North Sea was, right? It's 10 years old at this point. Um, so they published this one this year. This is the Redux version. And it's sort of like, um, you know, it's not uncommon that games get a, get a second edition now. But this isn't really a second edition. It's not just they've tweaked a couple of things. Um, they, like, reimagined the game in the same setting, basically. Uh, so in this game, we're trying to, well, we're shipwrights of the North Sea. We're trying to, trying to build ships, you know? So <clears throat> this is our little, uh, board here that we're going to use for, uh, like kind of like our, I don't know, our dock, dry dock. I don't know. This is where we build our ships. Okay. And, um, we're going to do that by using all of these guys here. These are village cards. I'm just gonna grab a couple so we can talk about how this game works. Okay. I think that's actually almost all the types. What am I missing? Uh, a Jarl. That's a mean looking Jarl. All right, so let's talk about these, these cards real quick. Also, I did a thing. Let's see if this works. How's that? We can see it a little bit more better. Um, maybe I got to tweak this a little bit. I'm working on a couple little stream improvements. Um, so this, this card here, you know what? In fact, let's do this. Oh, does the card cam not work in the front view? That's a shame. Okay. I'll have to tweak that a little bit more, but nonetheless, here is a, a Jarl card. Okay. Um, there's also cards for, uh, ships and buildings and, and other types of, of workers. Okay, uh, it's hard to actually use that card cam when trying to talk through the cards in general. So maybe I'll go there later. But basically, we're going to be building these ships. We're going to do that by placing them here in our uh, little, uh, I don't know, dock. Okay, and in order to build them, we need to get all these things on the left. That's something that I can show you better here. So like this one requires a worker, three wood, a sheep, and two ore. Okay. Um, so I'm limited on the number of ships I can work on at once to the space that I have. Hey, Razor, long time no see. Nice to see you. Um, so I'm limited to the amount of space that I have here. So I could only work on at most five ships and realistically less than that because at the top of the ship, it shows a little icon up here. There's like, I don't know, seven or eight of them. And that's like a skill that we need to have in order to, um, to build this ship. And those skills are provided by these, like, uh, I don't remember what they're called. They're not townspeople. What are these guys called? Specialists or something? I don't know. Anyways, these guys, like this one, the sailmaker here, can't, I have no idea what these respective traits are called. This one looks like masonry. I don't know how that helps us build a ship. And this is like some cloth. I don't know. It's a sail maker. So she, she can knit or sew or I don't know what those things, I don't know the difference. Anyways, she can provide these two traits. Okay. We need this one actually for this ship. What a coincidentally good example. So I need to have this sail maker present in on this board as well in order to make this ship. And some of the ships require like two or three different uh, icons like this. So we really can't just like overload this area with, um, with ships. 
So, kind of ostensibly my goal is to do this, but really I want to win. And I want to win by getting the most points. So we play five rounds. This is the round card up here. We're going to flip a new one out each round, unsurprisingly. And then we've got these tracks here. This one down here is for renown, okay? This one is for trade, and this one is like for raiding. So as we build these ships, some ships are for raiding, other ships uh, are for trade, uh, and some even allow us to establish renown because of their, their greatness, you know? So as we build these ships, we're gonna progress on these tracks. We're gonna get special bonuses from all of those sorts of things. But our annoying enemy, the AI, is also gonna be progressing on these tracks. And once we get to either these four, actually not even once we get there, after the first round, we get these heroes who are gonna help, come help our cause, but only if we're highest up on their respective track. There's Sven, if we're highest up, highest on the warfare track, the raiding track. There's Thyra, if we're, Tyra? Ty I don't know. It's more fun to pronounce the H, we're saying Thyra, on the trade track. And Frode down here on the, on the uh, uh, renown track, and then Randy at the end here. We we'll, we get to collect. This is like the pity hero. If you have none of the other heroes, you're losing on all three tracks. You get this one instead. Okay. Um. So yeah, we're gonna we're trying to build some ships. We can also build buildings like this church, for instance. That I can just do from my hand. I pay the resources that are shown on it. And I'm going to slowly assemble a bunch of buildings down here below my board. I start with this one, this hut, okay? And I can eventually get, you know, a church beside it and whatever else. More off to the side. I'm actually going to move this up a little bit because we're going to need a little bit more space. Because a really important thing in this game is buildings provide space for our other units. Like these guys and the Jarls and these uh, village, uh, like townspeople. Uh, because like the sailmaker, for instance, if I used uh, her skills to build this ship, then I would have to discard her. But I can pay a gold to give her a permanent home in my building down here. And then uh, she now lives in the church. And she's converted, I guess. I don't know. And uh, we can use her skills uh, any number of times. Okay. But buildings are expensive to get. So we're not going to be able to just do that for everybody. Okay, likewise, buildings give us actions. There's actually like a little worker placement element of this game. These guys were hiding over here in the shadows. Okay, so... Oh, that's weird. Something really strange happened with the lighting software. It's making me really angry. Uh, I'll fix that in a sec. Anyways, anywhere there's it shows a little worker placement icon, like here, for instance, we can put a worker there to execute the action. So if we put use our build too many ships at once, we lose ac uh, access to these actions. And as we get these buildings, well, they provide us actions. Like the church here lets me use a worker to draw two cards, for instance. And just like I could hire this sailmaker and keep her permanently, I could instead hire this assassin for a gold. It always costs a gold. And then that's going to make this church action better for the rest of the game. Now, instead of just drawing two cards, I can also spend a worker and a money to gain two gold, okay? So I can like buff my actions, but I can only have one person in this building. So if it's an assassin in the church, which seems not really thematically correct, I don't know, um, I can't put a sailmaker there, for instance. And the Jarl, the Jarls don't give us any special abilities. Uh, what they do is they give us points at the end of the game and they let us move up on the respective track. So this would give me one uh, on the blue and orange, the trade and renown track, and two points at the end of the game. But they still would take up that spot in the building. So I wouldn't be able to have the assassin or the sailmaker there, okay? So I'm trying to do a little bit of everything. Buildings give me more actions to do. I wanna hire townspeople to make those actions better, but I also wanna hire Jarls or I don't know, hire feels like the wrong term, but whatever, have these Jarls in order to advance on these tracks and get points at the end of the game. But I also want to have uh, these specialists so that I can create ships. I mean, it's Shipwrights of the North Sea is the name of the game, right? Um, so I want to be able to create these ships 
and have these guys, you know, stored where I'm not just using them and, and losing them each, each respective round. So that's kind of the gist of it. We're going to give it a try here. Sorry, I have a, I have a uh, very stabby, like hard and pokey lozenge stuck in my gums suddenly. So you know what? I'm going to go deal with that real quick. And I'm going to also fix my lighting software. Nothing should change. I will be, ba be back in like literally 30 seconds. I just got to walk across the room here. Be right back. All right, and we're back. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I gotta shuffle up these villager cards. One thing I didn't mention, a kind of important thing about this game, if we were playing this with more players, this is a drafting game, okay? So it's got this rather thick deck of villager cards, okay? The camera just shut off overhead. Okay, well, listen. I'm gonna show you those cards in just a second. I will be right back. Okay, now this should be working and should remain working, I hope. So, cue the rage screen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, I just foolishly forgot to, to do something. The camera, actually, I changed out my top camera um, for reasons that are not worth getting into. Uh, but um, basically, it needs, it's like... <laughs> there it is. Thanks, Martina. I really appreciate you. Um, really appreciate you. The, the only, the only good thing here is you didn't activate that while I was adjusting the camera because I was standing on this, the stool that I'm sitting on right now, fixing the camera. And if you had redeemed that a little earlier, I think it would have just taken you to the pro stream review and it would have been, it would have been rough. It would have been rough. So welcome in Gecko. Nice to see you. You threatened its entire family. Yeah, uh, I actually I turned the fan on so that it doesn't overheat, which I'd forgotten to do. So whoops. So this is a drafting game. That is one of the kind of uh, unusual things about the solo mode that I think are going to make it a little bit interesting. We'll see how it works. But basically, these these are villager cards. I really should have put. I don't know how I did that. I really should have put all these extra ones back in while I'm shuffling. Uh, but these are the Jarls, the townspeople, the buildings that we can build. And in a normal uh, multiplayer game, we're going to draft these. Okay, so you draft six cards each round. You play five rounds. Whoever has the most points at the end wins. But drafting in solo mode, uh, well, how do you draft in a solo game? Right? I don't have anyone to, to, you know, exchange cards with. So what they've done here is the way the draft is going to work is... Uh, we are going to draw five cards, keep two, draw four cards, keep two, and draw three cards and keep two for our total of six. So I think that actually gives us a little bit more agency in the draft. I mean, we can be really unlucky, like in that last draw, for instance, the, the three cards where we're, oh my God, I cannot shuffle. Apparently the three cards where we're picking two, I really screwed that up. Um, could be really bad, but the fact that we get to, uh, ship rights. Yeah, that's right. The fact that we get to draw multiple cards uh, at the same time means we have a little bit more opportunity to get, you know, cards with synergy. Whereas in just a normal draft, we're stuck with, you know, we get what we get and we don't get upset. Um, 
So we'll see how that works out. You're here. Nice to see you. Uh, try the pro streamer redeem, Gecko. You probably have enough points. You've been around a while. I'm strongly considering shuffling these decks, you know, with one turned the wrong way because I know Martina's watching and it'll just tilt her forever if these aren't faced correctly. But that seems unnecessarily cruel and annoying for me as well. So, all right. So we're going to give this game a try. We're going to try it first. Don't you dare. <laughs> there it is. Uh, we're going to try it first and foremost on like just the base game difficulty. So there are these. <laughs> hey, you did it. Heavy tech mech. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. It, it does have a cooldown, So I think we can only do this once every two minutes or so. But um, just to remind me in case I forget, you know. Uh, so let's just double check here. Yeah, it's five, keep two, four, keep two, three, keep two. Okay. All right. So, uh, the first thing we do is we flip out this round card. You have so many points. Oh, no. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that. Okay, so the first thing we do is we flip out this round card, okay? And on this, we can see that... This round, we're going to move the opponent uh, up on the trade track. We picked blue for the opponent. That's what Martina usually plays because, you know, she's offensive and mean. So we picked her for our opponent. Uh, so they're going to get two on the Renown, one on the trade track. Uh, this icon here would normally indicate which direction we draft in. Obviously, that doesn't matter for solo play. And at the end of the round, they just gain 10 points. So we're going to win if we have more points at the end of the game than our AI opponent does. And they're going to get, on average, about 10 points per turn, I think. So there's one or two round cards here. Um, there's quite a few that we don't use. We pick five out of a deck every game, randomly. Uh, but they vary from, like, I think, eight points to 16. So, uh, but they're kind of, most of them are around 10 points. So, anyways... Uh, we want to get better better than 10 points this turn. It's not going to happen, I promise you. And this shows us ways we can trade. So we can pay three coins to trade for a wood, or two coins for a sheep, or two coins for an iron ore. So. <clears throat> we flip out the round card. And uh, we also... What, so what things we know, right... All of these resources are pretty expensive. We have we start with two dollars, so we could buy either a, an ore or a sheep with our two dollars. We can't even afford a wood. What a shame! So we got to be uh, we can't expect to trade uh, copiously. And the advantages we get from having these heroes, we earn those by being highest on these respective tracks. We're now losing on two of the tracks. We randomly got a hut card here. Our first building gave us like one kind of pity renown but they have now surpassed us so at the end of this round we would get none of the three cards uh heroes unless we increase on these tracks so we probably want to try and do that at least a little uh, i will say easier said than done so let's take a look at what we got for cards we get to pick any two of these instead of drafting like normal we pick any two cards so we can try and get some synergy uh that would normally be really hard to do so a lesson i learned we've i've played this a couple of times uh as uh with four players and a lesson i learned is that like this carve for instance that's what the ship is called here this will be really hard for us to get because it requires like quite a few resources um so even if we like the points and the things it offers unless we want to just leave it sitting in our little dry dock here for forever we probably don't draft this this turn okay uh every card we draft we have to use but we can always discard them for something this is quite random yarls are always when we discarded give you a gold so gaining a gold for a yarl isn't bad gold's like the only premium resource it can be used in lieu of any of the other resources but more expensive things just straight up require it. We have one gold currently. We started with one of everything, three workers here, okay? One wood, one ore, 
one sheep, and one gold, and two bucks, two silver. Okay? So, just having the Arl and throwing him out in order to get a gold might not be terrible. Getting this longhouse would be nice. Uh, we, we have one building currently, our hut, right? Maybe if I go down here, can we see this all? Pretty much. Okay, so we have our hut. So we have one spot where we can place a, um, you know, any of the thing guys we hire, whether that's a Jarl or a townsperson or whatever. We only have one spot. Um, so having a couple more buildings feels nice, you know, kind of like there's a bit of an economic engine potential here. We just have to not, you know, invest in it forever. This would also, if we built this this round, it has a raid icon on it. That would let us get Svend, one of the champions, which would be really nice for next round. So I think we should take this Longhouse as one of the cards that we draft. And then I'm not really actually sure what our other card should be. These are both, like, relatively inexpensive ships. Fairing here gives us gold income. Scoot gives us money income. Both of those are going to be nice to have, but this one's probably easier to execute on. It requires one fewer ore, and it would allow us to uh, actually, if we're not building this, if we imagine a world where we get this and our longhouse this round, we're in the lead on the trade track. So that would be cool. So let's take these as our two cards. These ones that we didn't take get discarded. Okay, and we draft two more, but from four cards. So, what do we got? Okay, we got no ships. So we already took a, a longhouse and uh, fairing a ship. So, we probably, having dudes in that we can put on our... Uh, on our uh, in our buildings so that our building actions are better is probably not a horrible thing to do like this one when I've played this game the single hardest thing is getting enough workers um, when you buy say a building for instance if we built this treasury okay it shows that you need two workers for it um, those workers are removed from the game okay so uh, gaining workers back is really hard right we could also have like a little wombo combo here if we get this recruiter our longhouse would give us a resource and two bucks and then we could spend that two bucks to get two guys so we would basically take this action and we would get one resource of our choosing and two new workers i think we for sure have to take this recruiter and then i'm not sure what we do with the remaining draft so Ah, the weaver we need for our ship. Easy choice. Okay. Let's not even consider this. I guess let's talk about this really quick. If we took these cards, I mean, this one's a building. We know how that works, right? But this mercenary, so I could either discard him and he would give me a worker. Or when discarding him, I could take this action, right? So I could discard an additional card and get five bucks. So there's some options here. Okay, listen, listen. Dudes we can put in on in the building. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's how it works, okay? Leave me alone. That would that was a pro streamer moment right there. You missed it. Okay. So, this is where I feel, you know, yucky about drafting games. Because, hey, this gatekeeper, if I drafted the treasury, so we earned a gold and then got to pay a gold to get two guys and a dollar, I would, I would feel really good. That would have been an a nice like setup to have but we didn't draft that um and i mean i guess our hut actually gives us gold i think this is what i did last game last time i played the hut i, I pay a money to to get a gold i use the gold to get guys right this would give us a ton okay we're gonna try this out just as our strategy here overall we're gonna try and go hard for recruiting workers and then we're going to use those workers to go on raids. That means we need to get ships that give us military, okay? Uh, our current one gives us a little bit. We want others that give us more. This carve is too expensive. If it's easy, is there any lemons? Like, do you receive the lemons? Like, easy peasy lemon squeezy? Is that what you're saying? All right, I think we just take this Jarl for the gold. And we call our drafting complete. OK. 
okay? Rightly or wrongly, that's how it worked out. Okay, so. I don't know how to actually, maybe if I just move this up, because eventually I'm gonna have ships up here and buildings down here, and I don't know where to put my hands of hand of cards to kind of demonstrate what I'm thinking, because I can't really put it here. So we're just gonna shift these resources a little off screen. Who cares? Nobody needs to see them anyway, uh, if, even if they weren't there entirely, because then I can use my hand of cards where it feels like reasonable down here at the bottom. All right. So, this is our setup currently. What am I thinking is a great question. I don't know what I'm thinking. If I had a clever plan, I would have done it already. So let's take a look here. We took the gatekeeper, um, not necessarily like because it was, like just because it was there, right? It was an it was an uh, an opportunity. It gives us this works out really well with our hut, right? Now the unfortunate thing is that so basically once we get to this, we've done our draft. We flipped over the round card. We've done our draft, and now this is the meat of the game in a multiplayer game where you had you know, three, four players, you take all of your actions simultaneously. So everyone's doing this step at the same time. It's not turn-based or anything like that. And um, it's very open-ended because every card can be used to discard it for its uh, whatever resource it provides. Um, oftentimes you can discard cards and get card draw. So you end up replacing them with other cards, which then of course give you different options, right? And we can, you know, we could build this building or we could discard it for two money or, um, you know, we could discard this guy to draw a different card or we could discard him and use his his ability or we could decide to build this first and then, you know, house him in the longhouse or whatever. There's like a bajillion different ways to 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 slice and dice here. So what we know we're going to do is we want this gatekeeper in the hut, which costs us a gold. We only have one gold currently. So if we want to build our longhouse, we better find a way to get another gold. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, because I'm going to forget, is we're going to put our ship up here uh, in the in the dock. We can basically, this is the only place we can keep cards between rounds, and the only cards we can keep there have to have blue on them. Okay, I think we're also going to put our weaver there, because... We definitely don't have enough buildings or bandwidth to keep this weaver permanently, okay? So we'll just use her one time to construct fairing here, and this lets us keep that, right? So those were two actions we took. And then we know we want to build everything here. So if I want to build this, I'm going to need two workers, a sheep, and a gold. And then I'm going to need two gold to install these guys. So I will need to find a way to get three gold if I want to keep all of this, which may or may not be possible, but it's going to start by we're going to discard our Jarl here. That gives us a gold for its discard. Jarls always, they're green cards, they always give us a gold when discarded. That's their special thing. How can I best monologue all my plans to, to everyone? Isn't that how I share this wonderful board game with you, Gecko? How else would I share it? You know? Okay, so we gained a gold by discarding our friendly uh, Jarl, Aslog. That is, that is an intimidating lady, by the way. So, uh, probably what we want to do next is not screw this up. Build... Let, let's get our gatekeeper, because what we can do here is we can get our gatekeeper, we pay a gold, and we can put that gatekeeper here in our hut, right? So the gatekeeper now lives within this hut for the rest of the game. We could discard her, but we would get no benefit for doing so, so we really don't want to do that, right? Uh, but now this lets us use one of those workers that we have. Put the worker here. Spend a money, okay? 
to gain a gold. And then we can spend the gold to get two workers and a money. So in the future, we're going to, we don't have to do all of these. We could do just the top or just the bottom or both in any order. Um, but in the future, we are just going to, as long as we have a money, we're just going to do the whole thing, which basically means we gain two workers and a money. Or, well, sorry, we gain two workers, right? There's a roundabout way. We pay a worker or a money for a gold. We then spend that gold to get two workers and a money, our money, get our money back. Basically, this is a really roundabout way of gain two workers. We just have to always have one silver or we cannot do it. So we did that. We gained a couple extra workers. We have four workers available to us now. So we could use our gold, two workers, and a sheep to build this longhouse. We then want to hire this guy into it, but we have the problem of that costs a gold, which we do not have. So we're going to see if we can we can solve that though, right? Let's build this. We get we spend our two workers, a gold and a sheep. We now have a longhouse available, okay? And then um, we can always do these trades. These are the same always. So we can trade one of each basic resource for a gold. Gold works as all the other basic resources, and it's also worth a point at the end of the game. This particular round, we can trade three money for a wood, two uh, silver for a sheep, or two silver for an ore. Okay? So, we need a gold to get this guy installed in this longhouse. Why don't we just go get it here? We can pay two bucks to get a gold. Okay, we could alternatively spend those two bucks to get a sheep and then convert our resources, uh, the th one of each, into a gold. But the problem with us doing that is that then we... Um, basically, this way, we keep our a couple resources, which we can use towards our ship next round, maybe. Right? We don't have any money, though. Hmm... Do we end up with a net of money here? No, we end up with a net of resources and a worker. Okay, our worker we can send to get money. So this is fine. So we're going to spend a gold. We're going to kind of install this guy to, guy over here. Okay. And then with our final worker, we're going to place that here on the longhouse. So we get a resource of our choosing, two money, and then we can spend that two money to get two additional workers. So what resource do we want? Well, we want to build this ship. We have a wood and a ore. Ore usually is the most expensive. Wood is, it's kind of like, like a tier list. Like wood is the least valuable resource than sheep, than ore, but not really, you know? Um, so let's just, let's just take a ore and get that out of the way as our resource. We'll take our two money, but then we'll spend it immediately to get two workers. Okay, a nice thing about having workers and gaining the workers here is that these workers we get back each round. We do income at the end of the round and we'll get all of our workers back. The ones that we spend, like we spent two here in order to get uh, build this longhouse, those are gone forever. But these ones that we gain and then we place out on the spots on the board, we get them back. So with one of these, why don't we take the final spot on the board? We get two money. And unfortunately, we don't have a good thing to do with this worker yet, but like I promise it will be helpful later. So that's our first round. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I neglected when we built this longhouse. We get one on the warfare track, one on the trade track, and one on the renown track. Okay. Now, this is a sort of thing that isn't well acknowledged in the rules. What happens when there's a um, a tie and somebody already has a card. We don't care though because nobody's gotten these cards yet. So our opponent won't gain these because there's a tie. We won't gain them either, but we will get this raiding card. So basically we um, do income. Income's shown by night symbols. A little sleepy time. So we gain a worker. Okay, we get all of our workers back. So we actually have six workers. We have a little 
mini army here. This is really good for us. We also have ways to get additional workers at the bottom here. Okay. Now, uh, we assess the tracks. Because we're in the lead on the militaristic raid track, we get Svend here. Basically, what this guy's going to do is every time now, if we get to spot 4, 8, or 12 on these tracks while having this guy in our possession, we gain an additional worker. We recruit another guy. Additional workers? No way! Listen, it's really important. You'll see. I've been worker poor in this game every time I've played it, even when I've done things like this, to get more. Okay? So, uh, we don't give out either Thyra or Frode. Frody. <laughs> because uh, these tracks are tied. Okay? And we know that our opponent earned the equivalent of 10 points that round. And we built a building worth zero. We saved, saved a ship worth five, but we haven't done anything towards building it yet. And we built a building worth literally nothing. Um, so it's not looking promising so far from a score perspective, but they're going to always get like 10 points and we're going to, we're going to scale, right? We're going to scale into this. So we get better while they, they just remain the same. Who cares? Okay. So we're going to move on to the next round. We'll flip out this card. There's only five rounds of play. Oh no, what a jerk. This guy's going to gain two on the uh, raid track, one on the renown track. And it's also what, like we said before, 10 points. We made the right choice though. Wood, dirt cheap. So that's cool. Let's do our draft. Our starting draft, we draft from five cards. Pick two. Scale into next game? Stop it! No, we're not going to scale into next game. We're going to scale into this game and we're going to win. Okay? Okay. So. Let's, let's keep our eye on the prize here. We said we were going to be militaristic. We want, if we get up to spot four on the raid track then we unlock a raid where we can spend workers for resources what those resources will be is randomly determined we get a card we don't know what it's going to be yet but we have to like we have a way to get tons of workers we can get four extra workers every round we want to be going on raids all the time we got to find ways to be mean okay we got to find ways to be mean wait didn't he say that the opponent is martina and now she's a jerk <laughs> not cool <laughs> It's not that she's, it's not that the opponent is Martina. It's that the opponent is blue because that best represents Martina. I'm not sure that that's better, but here we are. <laughs> so anyway, we're drafting from these cards. These ships, this one's okay. It gives us one military, but we, we really want to find a ship that gives us two military or more. Now... Maybe this one's actually pretty good. It would give us two renown. That would get us to four. If we do that this round, we get an extra worker. But that's probably not happening. Um, when we get to four, eight, and twelve on this bottom track, it allows us to upgrade one of our cards here. So that makes our hut cost less. It makes our laborer cost less. Right now, to use our laborer, we have to discard a card. That goes away. It also would be worth points at the end of the game. And it would double our uh, income on our ship here. Instead of gaining one worker every round, we would gain two. Um, because we have ways to gain workers, this one's less interesting. But getting to four on here is actually really good for us. So the question is, do we keep this dude, this hard-to-build ship? No, it's too expensive. Forget it. We don't want that. Okay, so what do we want? We gotta pick two cards here. We don't want the ships. This ship is for trading. We're not trading. We're punching dudes in the face. We don't. We don't trade people. Trade. Uh, trade resources here. I'm in dangerous territory here. No, I'm not. It's fine. Team Martina. Yeah. No surprise. Okay. So of these, do we need any of these things? Keeping a Jarl is never bad. Worst case scenario, it's a gold, right? Um, do we need these for our current ships? No. 
but I feel like mm, they could be useful. And the blacksmith discarding it for a different card, that's a little speculative that might work out. So these are the two cards we're going to keep. We're going to keep Ilva, the Jarl who killed the bear that is now giving her a hug, and the blacksmith here. Now we get to draft two cards from four. Oh my gosh, we're seeing a lot of uh, Jarls early, which isn't super helpful. We got another of those stupid trade ships that we know we don't want. It only gives us two money, which we don't have a great way to get money, actually. So that might not be a terrible thing. Um... We already have this weaving thing. I think we keep the call uh, the the carpenter and the other Jarl. I don't know. I don't feel good about this draft so far. And then we draft two of these three cards. Okay, so we never found a ship that does better than one raid. We cannot get to being able to raid this round just because the cards did not come out, period. So that's really unfortunate for us. Um, the church will give us ways to use those workers, so I think we probably take it. Uh, it also will get us to the upgrade spot on that Renown track. And I mean... I don't know. We could use this sheep. Sheep are expensive this round. They cost three. We need one in order to construct our ship. So I think maybe we just keep that. Sorry, Watchmen, you're out. All right, these are the six cards we got. Two, a Carpenter and a Blacksmith, which if they're in a building, we can keep their things forever. They just basically make it easier for us to build ships, but they give us icons. Their, their specialties are not things we actually need for this particular ship. We kind of took them opportunistically, hoping to find a, a warship later in the deck that never existed. We got uh, Skipsbat here, uh, which we can. We were intending not to build, but rather to discard in order to get a, sh a sheep. And then we got two Jarls and a church. Okay, so let's start by building this church, right? What do we need? Oh, we need sheep for this as well. So it's going to cost us two of our workers. It's going to cost us a wood an ore, and a sheep. Hmm. Do I want to get this this round, or do I want to get... Yes, we want to get the church first. We'll get the, we'll, we'll get the church first. So, we don't have enough money to buy a sheep. Sheep cost three this round. Um, but we can discard this skips bot to gain a sheep. So we'll discard that, gain a sheep, and then we'll pay these resources. Two workers, a wood, a sheep, and an ore to build a church. Te not Team Obcost? Come on! I'm the only one here! You're cheering for the AI? The evil AI overlord? That's low. Uh, okay, so we gain... This will be worth a point at the end of the game. That's, that's big. And we gain two renown right now. So this moves us one, two on this track up here. Okay, from two to four. And on spots four, eight, and twelve, we gain a card. Okay, so... Well, these ones we gain a card. This one we upgrade one of our existing cards. So we get to upgrade either our laborer, our hut, or our ship. Our ship, if we upgrade it, we're going to get um, more. Instead of getting one worker each round, we're going to gain two. We have really good worker income down here. I don't think that's necessary. Our laborer we can use to gain any of the skills that we need at the cost of discarding a card and paying a gold. If we upgrade this, it's just a gold. We don't have to discard a card. So that's tempting, but I think, like, right now, the only ship that we're working on, we got the skill we need. So I think we upgrade, rather, our hut down here. So when we upgrade this, it's now worth a point. And instead of paying a dollar, right? Originally, we pay a dollar for a gold. Now, we just gain a gold and a dollar. So now when we use this action... We're still going to pay that gold to get two workers most of the time. But basically, we just get uh, two workers and two dollars. That's pretty okay. It's pretty okay. And because we had our friend Sven when we gained that, 
We gain an additional worker immediately. You don't want the AI to win, I misinterpreted you. When you said not team op cost, I misinterpreted you. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so I guess important questions here are gonna be what the heck else do we wanna do with our lives? Uh, we really got all these workers so that we can go raiding. I think we want to get this ship out. It gives us gold income, and it gives us, a like, we would at least... We would take the trade track, and we would tie on the warfare track. So we want to try and get this out this round if possible. Unfortunately, we need a boatload of resources that we do not have. Okay, we have a worker and an ore. So we need to find three wood. That could be three money. That's cheap. A sheep and an ore. Uh, these could also, any of these resources could be replaced by gold. So those are options as well. And our weaver provides the needlework that we need for the sails for fairing here. But she will be discarded when we use it. So we do have four additional workers that are not committed to the building of this ship. We could use them down down here and gain even more workers, uh, which is pro pro probably what we're gonna do. Um, and then, I don't know, our church lets us draw cards. We don't actually have a way, like if we pay a gold to put a blacksmith or carpenter in the church, then we get to retain them for future rounds, which will be really nice. Um, but they're not actually gonna make our church action any better. So because we don't, oh, but mind you, we could put Ilva or Thorsten in there potentially and move up on these tracks. Okay, we don't know what we're doing, but let's, we can't make our church action better. We can't, we, there's no way, unless we discard our blacksmith for a card and it happens to be a worker or something that we want in the church. We should just do the church action now, gain our two cards and figure it out later. Raid them, they won't return. Yeah, it's not like a, a Twitch raid. It's not like communal and nice. It's, it's 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 a mean one. Okay, so we got an artisan and a jeweler. The jeweler lets us turn money to gold, which we don't have an abundance of money. So this isn't a super useful card for us. This one, likewise, not super duper useful because we don't need these particular things right now. So we're gonna actually just discard both of these for their benefit. So we'll gain a or and two money. So going to the church was still useful. We got a little bit extra money. We got an ore. So now ore is covered on our ship here. So we can pay three bucks and a sheep. If we paid it, did it with just money, we would need six silver. We have four, so we're close. But if we find a way to get a sheep, then we're really quite happy. So let's do some of these other actions. We go here, we just gain a gold and a, and a money, and then we can pay the gold to get two workers and um, another money. Let's do that. So we get two money and two workers. If we have an extra gold, well, it doesn't matter really. Anyways, so now we have, we're back to four surplus workers that are still available. Uh, and we got six money, so we have enough that we could build this ship even if we just pay for the trades. But I think we can do better than that. At the very least, we can go here. We gain a resource and two money, and then we can pay two money for two workers. We have an abundance of workers. It feels really stupid, but I think we're still going to just do this trade anyway. Pay the gold! Whoa. Whoa. It's interesting, that little, like, cube... I don't know what that is, that little emoji, but, like, it looks shockingly similar to this icon. When it's, like, as a cube, I thought you had actually had this. Like, it's inverted, but it's... It, I mean, this isn't very unique. It's, like, a gray, grayish cube. But nonetheless, it looks very similar. Okay, so we're gonna go here. We're gonna use that to get our sheep, the only other expensive resource. And... Two money, but then we're going to spend that two money to get two workers. We do not have anything to do with these workers yet, but we will find an activity for them later. Guaranteed. Okay? So we've used all of our buildings. We have five workers and only two spots to use them on. That feels foolish. Uh, but whatever. 
Let's do that. We'll send two to get two money, and then we're going to spend that two money to gain a gold. So overall, we got a gold out of the deal. Uh, we're going to use that gold because we really think Ilva is... Her, that bear skin, super hot. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's put Ilva here in the church. Okay, that's going to give us a point at the end of the game. And it's also going to give us one on each of these tracks right now. So we're tied on Warfare, we're in the lead on Trade, and we're well in the lead on Renown. Okay. And then I think we're just paying for wood. I mean, Thorsten, we don't have a building for him to go in, so let's discard him for a gold. Okay. Now, if we look at our Trade chart here, Wood's cheap. Wood's only a dollar. So we don't want to waste gold in lieu of wood when we could just pay for it. So let's build this ship, right? I think I slightly miscalculated here and thought I was going to have enough uh, attack to be able to raid, but I can't. I still, I still suck at raiding. The whole purpose of what we were looking to do, and I have failed. Um, so that's three wood, three money, one, two, three, a sheep two ore and a worker. So those are all out. We built this ship. And now for the rest of the game, we're going to earn uh, one gold at, at the end of every round. That's pretty cool. We also get to move up on the military track and on the trade track. So we're in the lead on all three tracks up here now, right? But we critically missed by one on both of these. This one in particular, we really, eh, yeah. We really wanted to to move over there, uh, but but didn't. <laughs> All right, so we built our ship. We got our stuff for it, our rewards. We're doing well on all the tracks. We're in the lead on all of them, which is great. It would have been really nice to get to that raid spot, but we didn't. Oh, and we used our Weaver. It was her primary skill for this. So she also gets discarded and we do not get her discard reward. Okay. So at this point, we can't keep these guys. We don't have a building for them to go into. Um, so we're just going to have to discard them for their... I mean, actually, that's not true. We could place them up here speculatively, knowing that we're going to need their skills for, their, for a ship in the future. Right? Or... We can discard them for their abilities. We could draw a card and hope that we get something. Like, we got extra workers. We don't have a ton of resources. So even if we drew, like, a building or something, we can't really assemble it. I think maybe we just keep these guys. This gives us... These are some of the key skills that we need for some of the bigger ships. Um, so now we, we just have those. And we know we had an abundance of workers, and that's kind of foolish, but whatever, right? So... Uh, we do income, so we gain a worker and a gold. Nice. When I was playing this with my mother, I don't know why, when we play games with my mom, she always goes for, like, a big economy strategy. Uh, and this was the same. She built, like, three of these ships and was just printing gold every time. Gold's worth points at the end, too, so it was, like, it was viable. But extremely typical. All right, so we, uh do our income. We also assess these tracks. We're at the top of all three. We get these two other heroes. We have Sven, Thyra, and Frode. And uh, this means now, so before we we just had our, our, our friend Sven here, which meant that when we got to one of those 4, 8, 12 spots, we gain a worker. Now we can always trade three money for a gold. Eh. And additionally, when we build a ship, we can pay one fewer basic resource. Only one. Not one of each type. But useful to have. Right? Uh, we also have like an army here of workers. And no other resources to speak of. We also have no ships on the go. So I think getting up on this track, that's our goal for next round. Hmm.
So our friend now has edged out and is ahead of us on the the raid track. We still keep the card because they're assessed at the end of the round. And I don't think we actually do anything when the neutral player gets to these respective spots. It just blocks us, basically. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, we're taking this ship for sure, right? It's super duper expensive, but like this is this is what we wanted. This this is four attack. Um, we have the wood uh, from our carpenter here. We have the one skill. We do not have this one, but that guy is right here. So we can take the artisan and the skied, and then we can that that's our path forward to to raiding. I think building another longhouse, which gets us on these tracks a little bit, it's not a terrible thing. We want to stay ahead of them. Um, so one of the things about these these cards is they're worth three points, but only at the end of the game to whomever has them. So we really want to stay ahead on all of these tracks. So if we can build a second longhouse that gets us one on each track, it's hard. this is hard to come by. So I think we take that longhouse. I don't know what we take as a second thing um our carpenter and our artisan will likely be gone uh in building this other ship so we won't have the axe for this guy and we don't really want a renowned ship i mean this and that would get us to another upgrade which wouldn't be horrible um but maybe we just take the market hall it's cheap and lets us gain additional resources but it's it's also just really easy to build so maybe let's just do that because then that gives us another spot where we could put a Jarl or one of the other townspeople or something like that then we get the, to the least fun part of the draft we have to pick two cards from these three well there's another attack ship uh probably we want to keep that even though we won't be assembling that this round and then our conspirator gives us a way to get gold, but we have gold income. We don't have a way of, well, I mean, we do have the church. We can draw additional cards. So discarding cards for two gold would be super cool. Because then, you know, then we can just use that gold to pay our laborer and the cards instead of having the weaver. Sorry, weaver. You're too old. All right. So here's what we ended up with. We got a ship, a conspirator, a market hall, a longhouse, an artisan, which we need for uh, constructing our other ship. Let, let's just put this here. We know we're going to build that ship. We know we really, really, really want to build that ship. So we need these two icons. One of them can be the paid by with this carpenter by paying one money. And the other one, our artisan can provide. Okay, so we need a gold. We need three workers. And then we need all the other resources that we don't have. So we need to somehow come up with three wood, two sheep, and five ore this round in order to build this, which we desperately want to do because then we can go raiding, right? Now, we drafted a market hall. That lets us get sheep. But it also costs us other resources that we do not have. We also drafted a longhouse that lets us get resources, but costs us other resources that we do not have. And all of the resources are expensive this round. Nothing costs only a dollar, unfortunately. Everything, wood and ore, the cheaper ones, they come in at, at two bucks a piece. Uh, we could also... We're either gaining a ship, a sheep rather for this, or we can discard or like place it up here in order to to just construct it afterwards. I don't know. I think we got to focus on getting this one out. So, um, is there a compelling reason? Oh, I guess maybe I don't want to play my artisan. I might want to put him in one of these spots. 
Nah, forget it. Okay, so. Should I build the longhouse first? It at least gives me a net gain of stuff. I think so. It's two workers, a gold that I have, and then a sheep. I do not have the sheep. I also don't have the sheep from the market hall. Do I go get these elsewhere before building these? Probably. Probably. Okay. So, if I get a sheep and build the longhouse, then I can activate the longhouse in order to get a sheep to build the market hall, and then I can get more sheep, which I can use to build this ship. So let's figure out how that's going to work. We know we have all of the workers uh, allocated, and we know we get extras over here. So let's do that first. So, um, we gain two money and two workers from our hut. Okay, we get a resource of our choosing and two money, or we can we can spend that for more workers. I mean, we have so many workers. This feels absurd, but I think we're just going to do it on principle. Every time I've played this game, I've ended up with not enough workers. So on principle, we are going to gain a resource of our choosing, a sheep, and we're going to gain two money and then spend it for two workers. So we have like an army, basically. Um... Let's draw those cards from the church, because they might be helpful. And then we can see what they'll do later. Figure out what to do with them. It's a problem for another day. We got another weaver. It's not a horrible thing to have. Uh, and, oh, we got the Drakkar. This makes us earn points for every raid card that we have at the end of the game. And it also gives us additional uh, military. This is a harder ship to build than this other one that we already have. But it's just like, it's just a... It's more expensive, but it's also better. <laughs> so maybe we want to keep that. I don't know. Um, but we did get enough to build our longhouse here, right? Two workers go back, a sheep and a gold. So we built that. Um, let's use this conspirator. Uh, or let's, sorry, let's use this gold that we have set aside to hire this conspirator because that will allow us to get more gold back, right? We're going to take this action on the longhouse. So we gain a resource of our choosing and two bucks. And then we can discard a card to gain two gold. Let's get rid of this weaver that we don't... I mean, I, w I want to keep all the cards, but like... We got to get rid of something. And we like these warships. So let's get rid of this weaver. And gain two gold. A resource of our choosing. Um, which is going to be a sheep. And two dollars. Okay, now we still haven't constructed this market hall. If we want to, that's going to let us get extra sheep, which we need for this. They're expensive to buy. Um, but a challenge is that we need two wood, which we do not have. Wood is only two bucks each. We don't have a way of getting wood. Neither does, We don't want to discard these anyway, and if we do, they don't get us wood. We really don't want to pay gold for wood. Let's pay... Four bucks as two wood and build our market hall. Okay. And then we can activate that market hall uh, to gain two sheep. I don't think we're building this ship this round. Despite all of my like screwing around here, it's like we just need a ton of resources and I don't know that we can get them. So... We can put the gold back. We have the gold. We have the sheep. We need five ore and three wood. Where the hell are we getting five ore and three wood from? If we bought those, we would need $16. We got three bucks. We can get $2, but who cares? That doesn't help us that much. I mean, we do ignore one resource. So we could pay one fewer iron. <laughs> and in, instead of $16, we need 14 <laughs> Shit. Okay, so we did all that screwing around just to get this far and realize, well, we actually can't complete it, right? So we could take two money here. That still doesn't get us enough to do that. This is like the story of this game for me when I play it. It's like I'm always just a little bit shy, like... I would really like to just get to the top of the military track 
but like actually doing that's ridiculously hard. Um, okay, let's, let's forget this ship exists. Let's imagine we wanted to do one of these ones instead. Let's imagine we wanted to do the, the, the sneaky one, Sneke. Maybe that's possible. That would still let us raid, which we get to raid every single round. So the sooner we do it, the bigger its benefit, right? And we have workers who could go raid. Maybe. Okay. We would need a weaver that we don't have and a blacksmith, which we do have. Okay. We would need two workers, three sheep, which we don't have. So we have two, but we could pay one fewer. And then we still are like, God, we're still, so this is the cheaper ship, right? But we're still, we still need four wood and two ore. I mean, that's six resources instead of eight, right? This one actually might be achievable. Uh, how is it going to be achievable? I'm not sure. Um, each of those resources are the cheaper ones. They cost us two. So we would need $12. Okay, we'll pay one fewer sheep. We could throw this out and pay one fewer ore. So we would need $10. I mean, $10 is still way too many dollars. You know what I mean? Like, we're not even close. Um, so this gold is two of the resources. So then we need... We need eight bucks worth of money. Or, or eight bucks worth of resources. We need two wood and two ore. Because we're ignoring one sheep with our our bonus ability here, right? So two wood, two ore. If we discard this, we get one of those. Oh my God, we're a dollar short. This happens every time, every time. So if we discard this, we get a thing. One of the options that we didn't do, if we, like we were just trying to, trying to figure this out, right? Can we build this ship? We could put this guy here to gain two dollars right uh and then if we put a ship on top of him he actually gets removed from the game we don't care because we have an abundance of workers right um but when we uh like that would give us five dollars and if we do everything we need six bucks in order to get to build this sh ship so we're a dollar short. And that includes throwing this one away to get the extra resource. And everything else I can think of. We've used all of these abilities. There's nothing we can do. Criminal! Exactly! I agree. I agree. There's nothing we can do down here um, to gain it. And... I think we just... We can build neither of these ships. We don't have space for three, okay? So something's getting discarded no matter what. Does this one cost fewer overall resources? This one requires nine resources. This one requires uh, 11. So the Drakkar, Drakkar is not cheaper. <laughs> um, so it, it, it's more worker heavy. I thought maybe there was some world where that would make it easier for us. But no. <laughs> In fact, it doesn't. So. Okay. Well, we suck. We're going to go another round without raiding and another round without building a ship. And that makes me really sad. This is one of the like few misgivings I have about this. It's like I'm trying really, 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 really hard to just get military and despite my best efforts i can't do it right i mean i probably could have not built these and done it that way maybe but these were like a net gain overall these buildings so i'm not even sure that that's true anyhow let's pick a ship to keep let's keep the expensive one. Oh, and let's kill that guy for two money because we have an abundance of workers. Now these, we're gonna consume a bunch. We're gonna lose seven workers when we build those two ships. But it ain't happening today. Let's discard this one for a sheep. We don't have anything else we can do with it. We know we can't build those. We know we're a dollar short and we're sad about it. But what are you gonna do? A day late, a dollar short, all that sort of stuff. So 
it's the end of the round. We uh, get all of our workers back. We gain our income. We get a, a dude and a gold. We're definitely going to have enough to build these ships, or at least one of them, rather, next round, which will be cool. We reassess these tracks. So we're at the top of these two, but we are not at the top of the raid track, which sucks because this card gives us extra workers for getting to those 4, 8, 12 breakpoints, which we were, you know, we're about to do on two different tracks. So that would have been a nice one to have if only we had just min-maxed that slightly differently, you know? But we didn't. What are you going to do? Also, so far our opponent has earned 30 points. We've earned 1, 2, 3, 4, 9. <laughs> But we're, we're scaling. We're scaling. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay. Our opponent moves up two on the trade track and one on the renowned track. So she will also, if we don't do anything about it, take uh, Thyra, probably the least useful uh, of these cards, in my opinion. Um, but it is three points. We want to hold on to it if at all possible, right? So. I guess we draft. So this round, sheep, the only resource we collected that we need lots of are a dollar. <laughs> so they're dirt cheap. Uh, good thing we focused on that. Just the way it goes, I guess. Oh, I only draft from five. So we look at five cards and we pick two. This is another one of those warships. If we do want to, like, you know, go hard on war... Picking up an additional one of these is maybe not a bad idea, honestly. You know? Um, the antagonist is a way of getting money, which is a really good way of getting other resources. Like, our, we can turn our gold into other resources, probably at a net benefit, but we'd have to have a place for him to be. And we don't, like... I mean, I guess we do have surplus gold from our longhouse. Gold is also points at the end of the game, though, so we don't necessarily want to do that. I think that's tempting, but but foolish. Okay, let's 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 lean in. Let's take our warship, okay? And then we know that we need this artisan skill, which we don't have and isn't provided, and we know we need the one that the carpenter can provide. So let's let's take that as well. All right, there's another... Oh my god, there's another one of those ships? I don't think we need to lean in that hard. I mean, listen. These tracks do get us points, but it's only seven points. We would need 18. With our current ships, we're going to gain 10. We're going to be at thir 13. No, sorry, we're going to gain 9. No, we're going to be at 9. <laughs> Gosh, this would get us to 13 if we took it as well. Uh, okay, whatever. I said I was gonna be militaristic. Let's lean in. We're gonna take the we're gonna take the warship and the the weaver that we need in order, or not the weaver, the artisan we need in order to build it. We're just gonna hope that this works out somehow. Give him a pla a place for him to be. That's right. Oh, we got the other other warship. Okay, and the and the really modest warship. We have to take two of these cards. These aren't the type of cards that I was really. Um, hoping that we would find, honestly. Uh, I don't think this one's super useful. I mean, it is cheap, but, like, we just don't have enough space for all of these warships, right? The Sailmaker being able to provide... We don't need this ability, but having that ability for a dollar instead of paying a gold and a card for it is probably worth doing. Getting an additional Drakkar feels really hard, like, I, it's going to take all of our resources to get this one. And we only have one more round after this. Or is this the last round? This is the last round? No. No, we play five rounds. And we flip over a thing at the start of the round. So, no, no, We got one more round after this. Okay, well, we're taking the Sailmaker. Are we leaning into the, the, like, super offensive hard ship or the, like, we could actually achieve this, but it's not as cool ship? I don't know. Are you still going on YouTube? Yeah, I mean, I'm on YouTube right now. We're live on, in both places. 
go big or go home or go home <laughs> i don't know i mean there's no way we're we already have two extremely expensive ships here there's no way we're achieving all of these let's just forget that which resources let's take this one it's worth an iron it's the more realistic play okay so now we get to figure out how in the hell are we going to do this? So we know we want to build um, one of these ships. It doesn't matter which one. Either one of these will get us um, to the point where we are, uh, like to that break point where we get uh, uh, the ability to go raiding. So we can build, build either one. It doesn't really matter the order. And this also doesn't quite get us enough renown to get us to that break point but staying ahead on this track so that we remain we keep this discount i mean i guess she can't pass us during the turn so it doesn't matter but of the two this one's probably the more important actually no this one's the more important because the raids when we get a raid card the number of workers we have to send for the raid it goes down the stronger we are and that will be strong enough if we are at seven with this guy it's totally worth it. So we need three workers. We need a gold. We need two sheep. So we need to come up with five iron, which we don't have any of. And three wood, which we don't have any of. So first things first, let's go to church. Let's go pray. Because that lets us draw cards and maybe they'll give us something useful. Okay. Found an assassin, which lets us get gold. Uh, and found another one of those ships. We now have three of those in our hand. Uh, okay, listen, I lied. I said, like, let's go for it. But, like, that's... That's too much, you know? So they, we can probably discard some of those to get different resources or whatever. This assassin, you know, gaining gold. Um, we do have an abundance of workers, so turning a worker and a money into two of any resource is probably really worthwhile for us. So let's just let's just spend a gold to put this assassin in here now. We don't really need the sheep. I mean, we can't, we, we don't need the sheep for this ship, but we'll need them for other ships. And then I think let's just work across our, our stuff here. We know we need five iron and we have zero. Iron costs three this round. Wood only costs two, so it's, you know, plausible we could pay money for it. But we need to go get iron. So here, we gain a gold, or sorry, we gain two money and two workers. Okay, and then here, we gain a resource of our choosing, iron and two bucks and then we can use that two bucks to get two workers this might be one of the rare times where maybe we don't do that we might just need the money to get the resources that we need i don't know no we're gonna we're gonna do this on principle we're trying to be militaristic and i said we we're gonna get as many workers as we can so we are gonna trade it for workers and we'll just figure that out later we already used the church uh let's go to the longhouse so we get a resource of our choosing. Hey, that looks like iron. Two bucks. And then if we discard a card, we can get two gold. What card do we want to discard? All of... Okay, one of these ships. Probably the one that gets us an extra worker, because we know we have lots of workers. We'll throw that out and gain two gold for it. Hey, James and Chad. Happy Sunday. Welcome in, Allison. Nice to see you. How you been? Hope you've been well. Okay, and then here, we will find a way to make this useful. We gain two sheep, we discard a worker and a dollar, and we get two gold. Did I take the two gold from the conspirator? I think I did. I think I only had one left. But, or did I throw out the card and not take it and we had three left? Shit, I don't know. I got distracted by Allison. Oh no. Someone in chat was paying enough attention to know or can look, can go back 30 seconds or a minute or whatever and see, did I have one gold or three when I used the longhouse? Somebody will know. All right. So. 
we still need three wood and three ore. We can ignore one of those. Ore is the more expensive. So we can ignore one ore. So if we use two gold instead, that's all of our ore, our gold, our sheep. So we just need three wood. And wood is, is two bucks each. Do we keep our gold or do we pay money for it? Two, four, six. I think we keep the gold. Okay, so that's our wood. We'll pay three workers six wood. We'll buy it for two each. Or sorry, three wood for six money. Our two sheep. Four ore, because we get a discount of one through Frode. So we're using two gold as ore. And then our one gold. And we finally launched another ship after like, you know, four hours. We're, we are a shipwright again. So we gain four on the military track. So we go from three to seven. Because we pass that four break point, that means we gain a raid card. So this one. So we can spend. We'll just put this over here. I got woo. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Anyway, um, so if we have four, seven, or ten uh, military, it costs us two, one, or zero workers, respectively, to go raiding. That gets us to we get to draw a card, take a resource of our choosing, and gain a dollar. So we definitely are going to do this. We're going to spend uh, one worker because our military is currently at seven. That's why we built that particular ship right um so let's draw a card uh a resource of our choosing is almost for sure going to be iron okay and then we get a dollar and this gets flipped over but it gets flipped back up every round so we would be able to go raiding on it again next round um for one worker again so uh, oh, something that I messed up. We used our artisan for this. That was one time use because we don't have him in a building. And then we needed our the wood also, which we used uh, our carpenter and the one dollar or well, we had an extra dollar. So those guys are gone, in fact. But our board has a little bit more space on it now. Uh, if we want to you know, go go achieve something. If we built the crappy ship, which is probably viable to do this round, because uh, we have not a ton of resources, but we have enough, that would mean that we get another raid, right? Because this one here, um, if it would focus, which it won't, uh, gives us one military, and one military is all we need to get to eight. It unlocks another raid. Now, we could, I guess the question is, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. We can just put this up here. We got a worker. We got a sheep. We can ignore one of these one of these requirements, one of these ore. So we have all the ore we need. We just need three wood again. Now, we could spend our gold to do it. Or we can, you know, discard some of these things to get it, maybe. Now, we do need a weaver, like, trade skill, which we do not have, right? That's up here on the top. Um, but we can use our laborer to provide any of those skills at the cost of a gold. So it's going to cost us a gold and throwing away a card. Um, unless we have one of those in hand. We do not. Stupid Weaver always gets me. Probably another one of these cards, right? None of these can provide wood. This guy can. But we kind of like his ability. None of the other ones can. The Sailmaker... Uh, we'll discard. So we discarded for this. And we need three wood. We'll pay two dollars for one. We'll throw out this other ship, which gets us two dollars. That's another wood. Okay, and we'll use a gold as our final wood. So we paid for this guy to give us the skill. We got our worker. We got... We're buying two wood and using a gold as a final wood, a sheep, and then one ore, and we're ignoring the cost of the other ore because of our friend Frode. We get to deploy that ship as well. 
that gets us up on this track here. That gets us up to eight. So we get an additional raid card. Hmm. It only gives us card draw. That's sort of sucky. And we get to move up on this track. Whoops. So that gets us a trade card. That's one of these. So we either take three money immediately or we uh, get an income of an ore. I think the ore is way more useful. So we're just going to tuck that in under one of our ships. We have more income now. I think that overall we're pretty happy with how that... Um, came together All right we still have some resources left All right we got two sheep a gold a dollar we got four workers we're gonna spend one of those workers to go raiding to draw two cards because you know maybe we'll get something good we got a Jarl that gives us renown and uh, attack that's pretty okay if we had a place for him to go, which we don't. And a stonemason, which would mean that we wouldn't have to pay a dollar for this. But I don't know that that's super useful either. All right, let's look at what we got. These are the cards we haven't used. Like, the last couple turns in this game, you really, you, you dig deep. You know, you get, there's lots to do. Okay, so... If we want to build the Drakkar, which is worth 18 points to us, I, I think we want to do it. It would also get us to 10, which is the break point for our raids where we don't have to spend any workers at all. So we want to focus on building this. We cannot build it this round. By, by no means can we. Um, but uh, we will need the like uh, these three abilities at the top. Okay, um, our artisan can provide one of them, so we should probably just hire him now. This guy provides one of them, and then the weavery one, we actually still don't have, so we're going to end up having to use our laborer for that. That's not present on any of these uh, cards, we just have a carpenter and a stonemason. We also do still have these three extra guys, so if we can use these spots, not Covering them up is probably worthwhile. So I think we're going to discard the stonemason. He gives us a card draw. Hey, we got another um, Jarl. Now these Jarls, we don't have a building for them to go in uh, to keep, which is a shame. But we can discard them for two gold, which is not a shame. We, we, like, we like gold, right? And then we're left with this. So if we don't put these ships in the dock this round, we will not be able to build them, okay? I don't know if it's worth doing. I don't know. Uh, this is gonna, this is gonna require some noodling. So one of the things that's been difficult in this game, so I've played this twice with four players and now solo, right? You get points on these tracks for being at the far ends here, right? But you need 15 on a given track to get even a single point. And you only get seven at most if you get to 18. That's incredibly hard to do, right? We are at eight currently. If we build our Drakkar, that would get us to 10. Both of these ships combined is what it's gonna take to get us to 18. And I don't think we have 10 spare workers as well as, you know, 11 wood, seven sheep, 11 ore, and four gold. <laughs> like, we're, there's no way we're building both of these next turn in any context whatsoever. Um, so getting up really high on these is really difficult. Uh, we probably want to get to 12. We could use one of these ships to get there. But that gets us, like, if we build our Drakkar, it gets us to 10. And then getting to 12 with one of these ships means we're getting to 14, which we don't get any points for that. Like, we can either build one of these ships and try to get to 14, or we could just speculate that we're going to find a different ship that is going to be like Drakkar, where it's going to give us two, 
or we find two on a fortress or something like that. Because getting to 14 is a total waste, basically. Right? If we get from 14 to 16, 17, whatever, we get some points there. But that seems like it's going to be really hard to do. Okay, we're going to throw out the Carpenter. We're going to get an ore for him. Okay? It, we're either getting an ore and a sheep. Uh, yeah, these the bonus on these is also for having different sheep or different ships. So we don't get any additional points for them. Let's just throw these guys out. Another ore and another sheep. Those will be useful next round. We get a we get a ton of income, so we're gonna be really happy. Um, so what does our income look like? We get one guy. We get one ore. We get two gold. That's big. We get all of our other dudes back. Okay. These raids are available again. And we get Svend. We don't do anything with Thyra because it's a tie. Uh, and we get to keep Frode. So that means we're really well set up for next round also. And this is like the final one. So. They move up one on military. Two on renown. Just enough to steal three points for us. From us, rather. And that's worth four. Oh, they got the 16 and 14 point cards. So. They're going to have 60 points minimum. More if they're beating us on one of the tracks. So we have to do better than 60. <laughs> we have like. 25. So this this round's got to be big, I guess. Last round of the game, we got to make amazing things happen. I I'm not sure how it's going to work. Okay, our raids are available. Let's draft. Okay. So. We got woodcarver, woodcarver. Fortress gets us... I mean... This plus Drakkar would get us to that breakpoint of uh, 12, and it's easier to build than a ship. So let's keep the fortress. Or we could just build this birding, which would also get us there. Um, and then it's also worth more points than the fortress. I don't know. Hmm... The fortress costs us a lot of gold. Let's 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 build ships. It's ship rights. So let's not take the fortress. Let's take the ship instead. And then a wood carver, because the wood carver, does it provide us the other one we need? Uh yeah, it provides the needlework one that we don't have. So we'll take those as our first two cards. And we'll discard these ones. And then what do we get out of these? We have two stone masons, which we really don't don't need. Our blacksmith already provides us with the thing we need, and they don't provide us with like these are useless cards. Another birding, which is also not super useful, and a blacksmith, which oh my god, okay, so we got total a tragedy like useless cards here. Um. What are the resource costs? Ore is the cheapest resource. It's only worth a dollar. So let's just take these guys that we can discard for four bucks. I don't think we want this other ship. I mean, we could pro probably build it. Is it worth building for the six points? Maybe. I don't know. We already have two ships to build. That's a lot. We're going to use six workers just to build them. Let's not take another ship. We're going to take these two cards... With the intent of just probably discarding them uselessly. Ah, oh, we found another church and two more ships. Ugh. Okay, I don't feel like we've been very lucky in our draw here. Um, I mean, either of these ships instead, like, th they would let us win. We'll win on Renown with our Drakkar. This would let us, I mean, we're already, we get to keep it. I don't think we need this. We're going to take this one because it gives us a sheep. And sheep are expensive. And then the church would give us an action where we can draw cards. This is seven points. 
and it doesn't quite... Oh, this would get us to an upgrade. Which we otherwise wouldn't get. Okay. Those are the six cards we'll pick. I don't know whether it was worth it. They're a little iffy. I don't... I feel like we really got punished in the draft on this last turn. Um, but the good news is... We have a shit ton of resources. We got five gold. We got three she sheep. We got three ore. We have one dollar. That dollar is going to make the difference. Total difference maker. Okay, so. If we get Drakkar out on the board, then we no longer have to spend any workers for our raids. We just get them for free. That gets us three cards, a resource, and a dollar. Just for free. Okay, and then if we get to 12, then our uh, we can do our final raid for free as well. So, getting that out is definitely uh, going to be a focus. I mean, I guess getting to 10, we could do it with this birding ship as well. Um, so, it might be easier to, to, to get this one built first collect those resources and then figure out Drakkar. I just just would hate to only to like overshoot and miss this one. Um, you know, go for the min max and just min. <laughs> that would be a shame. I don't know. Let's do birding first. So let's place birding out on the map cuz our 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 artisan here will provide the skill we need. So we need two workers. A wood, which we don't have. Wood is the most expensive resource in this round. Three dollars each. We can ignore one resource, so we could ignore that one. Three sheep, which we do have. And an ore, which we do have. So yeah, let's just build this now. Ignore the, um, the one wood. Let's see what happens. So, two workers. Three sheep. No wood. One ore. We get the um, ability we need from our artisan, so he gets discarded. We get to deploy this. We move up two on this track, the the raiding track, uh, and we immediately gain four dollars. So that lets us trade a little bit more effectively as well. And then because we now have a military of ten. Our raids down here cost zero workers, so let's just do them. Draw three cards, gain a resource of our choosing. We're going to pick wood and a dollar. So one dollar, wood, three cards. Hopefully better cards than we drafted, because the draft sucked balls. Uh, buildings, which we don't really want to build in the last round necessarily. This one, maybe, I don't know. A merchant. So a... a, a I guess the silversmith, this thing's pretty worthless. The carpenter m may be useful. Um, doesn't provide any of the skills we need. So also worthless. An interesting thing about this merchant that we got, though, is we can use these abilities when discarding the card. Uh, like, I could either take a sheep, uh, or I could use his ability down here. I could pay a gold to get... Two resources and a, and a money. So instead of using this as a wood, for instance, I could get two wood and a money for it. So that's pretty useful. Is this the solo game? Yeah. So the solo game, Eva, in, in this, uh, in Shipwrights, the solo game is almost entirely the same as uh, the multiplayer game. The only thing you do for the solo game is you change, like this is a drafting game. So obviously you can't draft cards really without an opponent. So the way the draft rules work are differently, or are different rather. And then um, you move some stuff along these tracks here. You kind of have a, a false opponent, but you play five rounds and five times you need to move a couple of these markers. That's it. And otherwise you just play as you would normally play and uh, see what happens. So we're playing, we're trying to be militaristic, mean guys, this time, and uh, it's working out okay. In the last couple of turns, you often end up with a ton of cards. Um, it's a little bit hard to manage on stream, honestly, in a way that's useful. I own all the other games in this series for the most part. We do not own this one. Do you own the first version of it? 
by chance. I This is the new one, Redux, so the one that just came out. I also own the first ver first version, but only because I bought it on clearance like recently because I think this one existed. Uh, I just was curious to do a comparison, but I think maybe we own all the... We definitely own all the North Sea games. We own all the South Tigris games. Do we have all the other ones as well? What is it? Scythia, Raiders... And the West Kingdom also. We have Paladins and Architects. I think I have all of the Shem Phillips games. You have neither version, yeah. So so far, this has been a really interesting drafting game. Uh, I, I've liked it. Okay, so our goal is going to be to build this Drakkar here, right? Let's make sure we don't overcommit. It's four workers. Workers, are, one of the reasons why I'm so gun-shy on, on workers here is that they are the only thing that we can't kind of really get any other way. You have as many workers as you have, and like, if you've used your abilities to gain them, I can't use a gold in lieu of a worker, for instance. It's a worker or nothing. So they're, if you mess that up, it's often hard to replace them, right? We're gonna need two gold on this guy. We also need all of these abilities. We can pay a, a money to our blacksmith to get the hammer. Um, we can put out our wood carver so we can pay him a dollar. So we're going to end up paying a dollar to each of those guys. And then we still are one short. So we're going to end up paying a gold and a um, discarding a card in order to pay our laborer uh, to provide the the final skill we need. Do you have Legacy of You? Oh, I don't have Legacy of You. You know what? That's the only one. You're right. That's the only one that I've that I've skipped, funny enough. Okay, so in addition to this, we can we can ignore one resource. We have the ore we need. We don't have any of the sheep we need and we have one wood. So we need in addition to what we've paid so far, or set out, we're gonna need four wood and three sheep. And we have three workers available. So let's start our, you know, abusive gain more workers stuff. Uh, so we get a gold and a money. Do we wanna just take the gold and the money? Do we need the additional workers this time? If we wanna activate all of these, we do, but we could get them here. Okay, you know what? Let's do this one first. Let's start with our longhouse. So we gain a resource. Let's take wood, because wood's really expensive this round. And we get two money, but then we're going to spend that money to gain two additional workers. Okay, so we now have enough workers to do all of our remaining abilities down here, but not these ones. These ones are not super lucrative, right? Mm, but if we want to get the gold here, we have to discard an additional worker. So we do want to get the workers from this one. Because we'll get more gold that way. Okay, so we're going to activate our hut. And basically, we know we gain a gold, we spend it. So we get two workers and two money. And we're happy. Uh, let's go to church, see what we find out. We draw two cards. We got a Jarl. That would have been really cool if we had a building to put him in. We might actually have a building. Oh, only the Silversmith and the Church, which we already have. I don't know. We got some options there, potentially, though. And we got a Blacksmith, which is the guy who provides the last... Wait, no, it's not. It's not the one we need. Never mind. We already have a Blacksmith. It's a duplicate. Okay, so let's go here to the Longhouse. We gain a resource of our choosing. That's going to be wood. We get two money. And then we can throw away a card in order to gain um, two gold. So let's throw away a card that like gives us a worker or something that we're not going to need. We might actually want to build that silversmith, maybe. So I, I don't want to get rid of that one. Uh, we don't need this carpenter. So we'll discard the carpenter for two gold. Okay, so we got lots of gold. We got a decent pile of money, but wood is expensive. We have three wood. We're, we're still too shy. And we don't have any sheep either. Um, so we can go come here to the market hall. That gets us two sheep. 
we'll just put them over here. We can also discard one worker and a money to get two gold. Okay, so we got lots of gold which we can use as other resources, but of course we also want to just hang on to it because it's worth, it's the only way, other than face value, you kind of convert all your stuff into gold as much as you can, and it's worth one point each at the end. It's the only other way for us to kind of get like last end, end game points here, as it were. Okay, so we have our four workers. We have our two gold. We have our one ore. We have uh, two sheep. That's a third sheep. And then we have uh, three of the five wood. Now we can ignore one of these, so we can only do four wood, but we'll pay a gold as our final wood. So then we have all that. Our wood carver gives us the one ability, but we have to pay him a dollar. Our blacksmith gives us the other, the other, we also have to pay him a dollar. Our laborer gives us the final, final one, but we have to discard a card to pay for it. I almost feel like we already did the dis discard, but I don't think that that's actually true. Um, are we going to be intending to build any more ships right now? What's the only one we have left here? It requires something that our st stonemason can do. So... Uh, let's just get rid of this blacksmith. To pay for our laborer. So our laborer was paid. Our blacksmith was paid. Our wood carver was paid. These guys get discarded. Okay, we don't get the discard benefit from them. And then this messy bit of stuff here is all the stuff we need to pay to get this Drakkar in the water. So when we do that, this car, this one's actually worth a lot of points to us, right? So it's 14 points, which is huge. And then it's also worth two points per raid card. Okay, um, and we get to move up two on the uh, Rage track and two on the Renown track. So two on the Renown track means that we're going to stay ahead of our opponent here. That's worth three points to us, basically. Two on this track means we get to 12. That gets us another Raid card, the final one, which we know we'll be able to do. And it also gets us a worker because we have our friend Svend. Okay. Um, so that's super nice for us. And then, yeah, we have all three raid cards. So this is worth six bonus points. This is a 20-point ship. It's a huge boon for us in terms of actually winning. Now, the raid that we just got um, requires... if We have more than 10 attack, so we have to use zero workers to activate it. It's just two gold, which is a flat two points or maybe gives us a little bit more opportunity to, to make something here on this last turn. Um, so that's pretty good because now we're kind of at the point where we launched the ships we wanted to. We're probably not getting points on any of these tracks. Okay, we've kind of, I don't know, cobbled this together okay. And um, I think we're just trying to see what can we, what can, what else can we do to get, to get points here, right? We do have one more ship we could try to build if we wanted. We could put that in the dry dock. We do not have this ability, but we've got it on a carpenter here or a stonemason. So we would have to pay a dollar for it. We would need a worker, a wood, three sheep and two ore. We can ignore one of those requirements. So we could ignore the wood because we don't have it. And we could just pay money or gold for the other ones. This would allow us to draw two cards. It would also let us get an upgrade um, because we get past eight. Uh, the upgraded cards, these ones, they're worth points on the other side. So that's probably worth doing. If we had really min-maxed, if I had a little... Hey, Jamie, welcome in. Um, if I had, like, really min-maxed and had better, like, bandwidth, if we had built this one first, we could have upgraded our laborer. Actually, no, that's not true, because we needed the Drakkar to get the upgrade as well. Okay, let's try and build this guy. We can do this. Because it's worth six points, a bonus point for having a different type of ship, because we don't have this uh, a bard yet. We're also predisposed to liking bards around here, so that's a thing. Um, so we'll hire the stonemason. He can provide the carpentry we need. So, it's going to cost a worker. 
We're going to ignore the wood cost with our friend Frode. Okay. We need three sheep and two ore. Now, ore only costs us a dollar. So that's our ore. So we need three sheep. Uh, we can buy them. That's two sheep. We could use a gold for a final sheep, or we could just go here with our last worker, collect two dollars, or maybe there's a card we can throw out that is a sheep. The merchant. Oh, we could just use the merchant to gain sheep. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, let's let's think this out. Uh, when we discard a merchant, we can use his ability. We pay a gold to gain two sheep. And a dollar. Then we can keep our money. Okay, cool. So now we have two sheep, three sheep. All right, we did it. It was complicated and messy, but we did it. We have to pay this guy a dollar because it's his minor ability that we're going to be using. Uh, and then we have one worker. We're going to ignore the wood cost with our friend. We'll pay two, three sheep, and then two ore. Because ore is dirt cheap. And that means we get to put this bard out, okay? That will allow, allow us to immediately draw two cards. And we move up two on the renown track. That lets us gain a worker, because we got to eight. And we get to upgrade a card. We're going to upgrade our laborer. He's now worth two points and... When using him, we no longer have to discard a card. We just have to pay a gold. I don't think we're likely to be building anything else this round because we're pretty short on resources, but maybe. Depends on what we drew. So let's take a look-see. Let's take a look-see. We got another um, Jarl. Oh, or maybe that's the Jarl we had and I was looking at these backwards. And we got another Ring. And... Uh, a stonemason. Okay, so let's think this out here. We don't have a building for the Jarl. He's worth a point and three on the renown track. One, two, three. That would get us another upgrade. That would make our ship also worth a point. I don't know if one point is really worth that, but if we wanted to just like demoralize these guys. Uh, we could gain two points by finding a place to put this Jarl. Um, we could also build this ship, potentially. It's cheap. Uh, we do have... It's one we already have, so we wouldn't get bonus points for it. Um, but it would give us the one uh, trade that we need to sort of... You know, for sure... Like, this is sort of an rules ambiguity. I don't know if we should have the three points from the trade lady or not. I guess the Jarl, like, we're probably gaining five points at the cost of five points, whereas if we build the silversmith and put the Jarl in there, it's probably like a net gain overall. In terms of the resources we spend. So let's try that one. Okay, so let's... Yeah, we don't want the church. Let's build the silversmith. So that's going to require our final two workers. A wood and a gold. And we can't ignore resources on this. This is only... ignore. We can only ignore resources when we're building ships, as it turns out. Uh, so we got to pay for that wood. We don't have enough money to do it. Um... So, can we get it on a, one of our other characters here? No, we cannot. So, we're going to pay a gold as a wood. So, we're going to pay two workers and two gold to build our silversmith. Then, we're going to pay an additional gold. So, this cost us three points in gold to get to install this Jarl here. Uh, when we built the silversmith... We would move up two on here. One, two. I feel like I've made a mistake and forgotten to do that here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Whoops. Missed one earlier. That's okay. And we also, when we put the Jarl in here, we get three on the Renown. It gets us the final upgrade. It's this feel like we're really important. So I think this was overall probably a net loss. We spent three points worth of resources getting this. And we earned one two points with it. Um, probably not worth. Probably not worth. But uh, it's the moral victory. We're, we're now winning on each of these tracks. We also gained a worker back through our, our friend, friend Sven. And if we have some magical way to get this ship out... We would get another worker back, but I feel like even with our bullshit abilities, this one's unlikely to happen, right? We would need our final worker and six resources. We can ignore one, so we could ignore one wood. We would need five resources. We have three, and we would have to pay this guy a gold, so I don't think we can do it. I mean, maybe if we get discard these for resources, maybe we can discard this for a worker. Does that help us at all? Or is it better instead of taking the worker to draw two? No, oh, it's a building. We can't use it that way. Well, we're not going to build the church. There's no reason why we would do that. So let's discard it and gain a worker. And then that means we can use our worker on the silversmith to get four bucks. And perhaps we've min-maxed some, some nonsense here where this will work out, okay? So, if we wanted to build one final ship. We can ignore one resource. Wood. <laughs> okay. We would probably... These guys don't provide the resources, the skills we need. So we, we can just plan to discard these. There's no reason why we would keep them anyway. So that gets us two bucks and a sheep. So hey, that's one of our resources. So we've got our final worker. Our two wood. A sheep. We'll pay our laborer to provide the skill we need. And then, ore is only a dollar each, so we can pay, and we can get a final sheet or final ship. Now this ship is worth five points anyway, so we're spending three points to gain five. This one's probably a net gain, and by doing this, we'll get another worker and an upgrade card, which maybe gets us another point or something. We'll see. On principle, we're building as many damn ships as we can, right? Because it's ship rights of the North Sea. Not like stand nearby and collect resources rights of the North Sea. So we'll build our third fairing here. That gets us one uh, on the uh, raid track, one on the trade track. That means we gain one of these cards and a worker. Okay. So we either have to put this under one of our ships and it's going to give us a sheep for income, which like whatever, or we spend it immediately as a worker and a dollar, which is also pretty firmly into whatever territory. So let's just take it as income. We do get to collect income at the end of the round for this final round before we finish. Um, so if we can use that, we can trade for gold. If we can use that sheep toward trading for gold, it might be worth a third of a point to us. Not 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 a like tremendous victory overall overall, but you know whatever, who cares? Uh, and that I think means we're like really tapped out, right? We have no cards left in hand. We have no ships to build here. We have one worker, which means we can send this worker here. He can spend two bucks to get a gold, okay? And then we also do have Thyra, our friend. We can spend three bucks to get. An additional gold and then other than that we're we are now super tapped out okay super tapped out so uh, let us do our final income we get three gold worth of income an ore and a sheep 
but we do not get any workers or well we would get workers but it doesn't matter in the final round we don't get any wood and we can't buy a wood with a dollar so we almost got enough resources here that we could have gotten got one final point but not quite but that's okay we have five points in gold so uh overall i would say that worked out pretty okay I was going to use my phone for the app for scoring this, but um, it apparently I left it on my desk or something. It's it's not here, so we're not going to do that. And uh, we're just going to make sure that I do it correctly by reading and stuff. So we're at the top on each of these tracks. That means we get all these cards. That means we get the points for them, three points each. Uh, we didn't actually get far enough on any of the progress tracks to earn points on here, but whatever. Um, so, we earn points for our long ships, uh, including any bonuses. So we have 1, 6, 16, 26, 32, 42, 46, 52, plus the bonuses. One point per different ship. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six bonuses, or six points. I don't remember what I said. Was it 52? Shit. That's why I should have used the app. Okay. One, six, 16, 26, 32, and 20. 52 plus six for this. So 58 plus six for this. That's 64 points from our ships. Uh, which basically means for sure we've won, <laughs> okay? Um, so that's cool. We get points for our buildings. Um, one, two, three. That, that, that's it. <laughs> okay, three points for buildings. Cool. So we're at uh, 67. Uh, we get Jarls. We recruited two. That's 69. Nice. Progress tracks. We don't get any points for those. Okay. Uh, we get victory points for these hero cards. We get nine because we're at the top of... We beat our opponent on all three progress tracks. So we get nine uh, points for that. That puts us at 78. And then we get one victory point per gold. We have five. So we got a final score of 83. Uh, that is comfortably the highest score I've earned in this game. By a lot. And then our opponent had 60, okay? Because we just add up the, the scores shown on these cards. So 10, 10, 10, and then 16 and 14, Those are that's 30. So 30 and 30 is 60. So 60 points for the bot to 83 for us. So we thoroughly trounced the bot. Um, it wasn't close. And that's that. We, we win. We win. So, in the solo mode, uh, there are... Uh, this basically worked out how I expected it to, okay? My uh, expectation here was that I was going to... Um, because in the solo mode, you draft pairs of cards, that's significantly better than draft than the normal draft you do where you take a card and the first uh like with four players the first hand you have you'll see again and the second hand you have you'll get one card from those but whether you'll actually get cards that are useful and match what you draft who knows right um so t drafting pairs of cards makes it generally easier so i think we utilize that pretty well um and then also the uh tracks were like determ not deterministic but like uh almost right so we were able to maintain like they really didn't do well uh, when i look at these tracks you know these i've had some misgivings about these in the past in the multiplayer game where uh getting over to here is extremely hard like we really went hard on these ships and we still didn't get even a single point extra and once you get to, to 10 and, or 12, certainly when you get to 12, like, it's a ton of effort to get to 18. The couple bonus points you get aren't worth it on their own, really. Um, 
and I don't think they'd be worth it at all. Like, I think these tracks, it'd be really hard to get there. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. But um, anyways, we kind of knew what we needed to do in order to stay ahead because these are calculated at the end. Um, and then we gain the cards and then we flip out and see what our opponent does. We, we always knew during the round, okay, well, if I want to keep that card, I have to do, I have to gain one point on this track or whatever the case might be. That was significantly simplified compared to like a multiplayer game with other opponents who are doing different things and whatever. So overall, I would say this was easier. Like 83 is the best score I ever had. I think the highest score I had in a four player game was 68. Uh, I haven't played this game a ton, so I'm sure I would get better at it uh, with familiarity with the draft and whatever. But nonetheless, uh, this was a little easier. So we're going to try it one more time. This is only three o'clock. I got time. So they give you these cards uh, with the solo mode. Okay. These are Nemesis cards. Okay. And uh, maybe I could even just, you know, I could just uh, show you them down here on the, on the thingy dingy. The whole purpose built, hey, let's look at cards feature that I have here. So all of these guys essentially, uh, like they kind of seed the the tracks like quite a significant bit uh and then they also have a restriction on the bottom like this one says tucking cards under buildings costs an additional gold that's horrifically like that is so mean okay all buildings cost one additional resource of any type all ships cost one additional worker and you must pay one silver to use hero and laborer powers Ugh. So all of these are mean, basically. So uh, I feel like you you can add any number of these cards, but I feel like if you added all of these, that makes it probably functionally impossible. They're gonna get, they're gonna win all the tracks. You're never gonna have the heroes anyway, and uh, you know their scores whatever it would normally be plus nine, and the game's significantly more difficult. So I think we're gonna try this. I mean we 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 skunked them right like we were it was 60 to 83 um but i feel like all of these give enough of a difference that it's going to make the game quite a bit harder i'm trying to decide do i play with one or do i play with two i don't know i feel like there's a they give these cards give so many um of the bonuses uh, on the side on the tracks that like i think the gap between one or two is probably really high. Let's try it with two just on account of the fact that we kicked the uh, the bot's ass. And we'll just see what happens. Uh, I'm going to expect a loss this time, basically, as a result of this. So, what do we got? Freya and Erica. So the ladies are here to ruin my day, basically. And what do these what do these ones do? So we're we're losing the trading track. We're, we're never winning it ever because they start at six on it. They also start at three on renown and three on the raid track. So it's going to be really difficult for us to get those heroes. Um, I think the trade one is honestly the least useful for its ability. The, the points are nice, but its ability three money to two gold rarely seems useful. Uh, could be a skill issue for me, I don't know. But uh, all buildings cost one additional resource of any type. That's not great. I like buildings. And you must pay one silver to use hero and laborer powers. So this is our laborer over here. So that's our way of gaining... Uh, we can use our laborer with gold and cards. Um, also, I don't know if I included our laborer in our score. I don't think I did. Maybe about 85. Anyways, uh, we can use our laborer to provide the abilities uh, needed on ships, and it can provide any of them. So we have to pay a silver in order to do that, and buildings are just more expensive. So we have to not forget about these powers. That's going to be an important thing. 
Just woke up from a siesta. Did you know you were winning easily while playing or at the end? Um, so I would say that, uh, it's sort of an interesting thing with, with this game. Cause like, you don't really have a bot per se, like the AI player here moves up on these, uh, these three tracks, the raid trade and renown tracks. And it was easy to keep tabs on where we were relative to the bot in that regard. And we knew the bot's score. And I had some semblance of an idea of what a final score would be. But a thing with this is like, you know, when I look at what we had, after two rounds of play, this wasn't upgraded. And I don't think we had built any ships. We might have built this one on the second round. But it might have been the third round. So basically, when I looked down at our board, just because it's how this game scales essentially we had something like you know seven points after two or three rounds and they had 20 or 30 right so the bot sort of like is gonna progress in a very linear fashion whereas uh, we scale like we earned more on the last round than the four rounds before it cumulatively right so kinda i i, I think i was surprised I think I got more done on that last round than I expected myself to. And then we won by more than I was anticipating. I thought we were going to win, but I thought it was going to be... The bot was going to have 60, and we were going to end up in, like, the high 60s, low 70s. And then we managed to just, like, squeak an extra ship or two out of there somehow. It was a really long way of saying, kinda. <laughs> All right, so the one thing I'll need to do is that um, one thing that is kind of nice about this game is it is pretty variable in the setup in that uh, you start with a building, a hut, okay? And this doesn't really affect things very much, but the hut has, like, you gain one on one of the tracks, and there's six huts, and they each have a unique power. So we had one that gives us gold, and we were able to upgrade that with another worker in a way that was really complimentary. Um, but we're going to pick a new hut card randomly and see what we get. And it might probably changes the trajectory a little bit. And then additionally, the round cards here. So in the solo game, these ones determine, you know, what tracks the AI moves up on and how much they score as well. In a multiplayer game, this determines which way which direction you draft in um but these are also very uh variable it looks like actually i thought there was a lot more tens in here than there are so we actually had a low scoring bot compared to usual we're gonna get our butts kicked <laughs> that's what's gonna happen here we're gonna pick five of these cards at random uh for the round and we are gonna get absolutely annihilated because now we have a couple restrictions on how we play that's gonna make it a little bit harder. And apparently that was a low scoring bot, whereas I thought that was a pretty average one. So we'll see. One, two, three, four, five. So we get five round cards. We do not get to know what they look like, what's on them, etc. And I'm just gonna leave our hut out so that we get a, a for sure a new hut. And we'll take this one. So this gives us card draw. Card draw is the uh, thing in this game that I feel sort of the most at odds with. I'm not sure. Like card draw objectively is good. You get six cards. You have to use all of them every round. And having more cards than that is, is better, right? It gives you essentially kind of more actions. Like worst case scenario, you discard those cards for like a bonus, right? But it also is sort of the most speculative thing in the game where, you know, sometimes you draw a Jarl and you discard it for a gold and other times you draw, you know, a thing where you get a wood and wood costs one silver that round, right? So it's like, or maybe you get a card that situationally you need, you know, for your hut or whatever, you can upgrade it and it works comp in a complimentary way or other times you don't. So it's sort of like, you know, could go either way. Also, the music is over, so I'm gonna have to fix that. So what I think I'm gonna do here is I gotta shuffle like a bajillion cards 
and kind of finish the setup here. I'm gonna run and grab a drink real quick, pop that up, and fix the music. Uh, so I'm gonna take like a five minute break, probably less than five, but uh, I'll say that it's a five minute break. And I'll shuffle up these cards, get a drink, and uh, be right back. So I will see you guys very soon. All right, friends, welcome back. Uh, thanks for hanging out. I'm just finishing the uh, initial setup here. Um, Zakun, nice to see you talking about Garp Hill. Uh, I also have basically all of the Garp Hill games. We were talking, Eva and I were talking about this earlier, right? So I have almost all of the Garp Hill games, except I do not have Legacy of You. Which is weird because uh, it's interesting to hear you say that you've enjoyed it less than the other solo modes. Because I feel like, I don't know what it was about that game, but there was like something ar totally arbitrary that I would just like, I don't know, I was less interested in it. Um, now, of the Garp Hill games, I haven't played too, too many of them um, as solo. Uh, we have, I think, all of them, uh, except for Legacy of You. Uh, like, we have all the South Tigris games, all of the North Sea games, the West Kingdom games. Um, I have Raiders of Skyvia and, you know, kind of a couple of other ones in there. It's hard to even remember because there's like a, there's like over a dozen now of these Shem Phillips Garp Hill games. Uh, but yeah. Right here, we got Hadrian's Wall. That's another one, right? That's right, right there uh, that I enjoyed quite a bit. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I'd be curious your thoughts. Um, I also am not too familiar with Legacy of You. I see you mentioned 6-5 in the campaign. Is that a, a, a spot within the campaign? Or do you mean you're like, you've won six scenarios and lost five? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not really familiar with it. But I'd love your thoughts on Legacy of You and what makes the campaign interesting or just kind of like any thoughts about comparing it to the uh, existing, uh, to the other solo modes. Also, welcome back, Gecko. Nice to see you. I'm just finishing setup here. I shuffled this enormous uh, deck and I'm just grabbing out uh, these uh, resources for us to get set up. We start at one on the rage track. I would say an interesting thing about this solo mode uh, of Shipwrights uh, in particular, the original game didn't have a solo mode as far as I know. Maybe it was added afterwards, but certainly it was published as like a two to four or two to five player game. Um, but in this one, the solo mode adds like no additional bandwidth. It doesn't involve learning another rule set or some weird workflow. Like by, by stark contrast, I really enjoyed Scholars of the South Tigris. I played that for the first time on stream and it was hard. Um, but the the way the bot worked was like learning, like learning a rule set for a whole second game almost, right? It had like its own little way that it worked and like a whole thing you had to do each round uh, in order to move through it. And like, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with those. I sort of like, I like that when I'm, when the effort feels like uh like worth it like uh i'm i'm okay so i'm gonna go through and do all these cha choices on behalf of the bot or whatever and then uh that's like emulating a normal play with a with another human player if that's how i feel about it then it's worth it and if i do that and it feels like i went through all of this rigmarole and i might as well have just compared my final score versus a score track in the back of the rule book then that's when I, I get more of those hate feelings, you know? Um, oh, you win seven times or lose seven times to complete the campaign. That's cool. That's interesting. Yeah, so it shows my level of familiarity. All right, so... Where were we? Uh, I'm all set up. Um, this area of the board looks completely different compared to last time, right? 
So last time, you know, the uh, bot started at zero for all of these and just incrementally moved them. They move usually like three increases per round spread across all of these tracks. Uh, but we were like comfortably in the lead even by round two. Now we're way behind and like getting into the lead on here would take us probably most of the game, right? Uh, to get like, if they don't move at all, we would still need seven or eight trade. Presumably they will move in that time and we would need, like this is kind of where we ended the game, right? Like it's gonna take us a lot. That means we're prim probably playing without the benefit of the, uh, the heroes for much of the game. We'd like to try and earn them at least on the last round because they're worth three points each and because there's only one other opponent and they get them if we don't here, it's functionally each of them's worth like six points, right? Um, so they're disproportionately valuable, uh, I think, in the solo game. And getting them is going to be hard. So we really went, uh, maybe I was a little overconfident here when we went with our two our two restrictions, but uh, we'll we'll see. We kicked their, the bot's ass. Maybe it's our turn for an ass kicking. Uh, and I have to remember these rules. So we have to pay one silver to use hero and laborer powers. The hero powers aren't going to matter much because we're not going to have those for a long ass time. Okay, and then all buildings cost one additional resource of any type to construct. That feels personal. I, I really have been trying to uh, focus pretty hard on, on buildings and getting complementary ones to get a little uh, uh, economic engine going in this game. Uh, I, don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. So Enough you, more ship rights. There you go. Oh, wow, you put a huge comment. My main complaint is that the core puzzle is the same each time. It's a very good puzzle, but I recommend not binging it. What you're doing now with playing it twice in a row would not be fun in you. Oh, okay. Interesting. You reset campaign after you do either. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. That that's that's interesting. Uh, I I'm kind of like in, intrigued about that anyway. But um, you know what? It might even be just the fact. Okay, this is the last thing I'm going to say about Legacy of You. It might even just be the fact that it's a campaign game that was the thing that was enough for me not to get it. Because I have such misgivings about campaign games. I want to love them. I do love them. But I like to play lots of different games. And actually getting through campaign games, even a solo campaign, like that's very accessible to me. I stream every Sunday, usually solo, 99 times out of 100. I could do that, you know, every Sunday or whatever. But I don't want to play a campaign, the same game, for like two months. I have like almost no interest in doing that, right? I want to play different things. So it might have even just been the campaign nature of it that was off-putting to me. Okay, so back to shipwrights. So we know using hero and our hero powers, which we don't have any uh, available yet anyway, and our laborer more, more uh, uh, costly this time. And... Uh, Buildings, also more expensive to construct. Other than that, we've reset this back to normal. They start with quite a bit of additional stuff this time. Uh, three on the raid track, six on the trade track, and three on the renown track. We are at one on the raid track. Um, so we'll have to see how the draft treats us. Uh, we start with three workers, two silver, and one of every other resource. That's the base start and let's see what they gain oh they get two on the raid track and another one on the trade track uh all resources are a little bit expensive this this round um so wood and ore cost us two silver sheep cost us three some of the cards they only cost one really like those ones that's nice so we need more ship rights. You still recommend it. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I will probably get Legacy of You just because I do have, like, every other Garp Hill game, right? And overall, I would say uh, there's a couple Garp Hill games that I'm really enthusiastic about. I deeply enjoyed Scholars, like, a lot. I, it's the type of game that I love that my groups don't love because it's just a little too heavy, right? Um, but... Uh, 
I think that, and paladins also, paladins and architects, super good. Um, but uh, I don't know that I'm like super brand loyal. I don't think, oh, this is a Garp Hill game. It must be great or whatever. But I have been had really good experiences with them overall, you know? Okay, so let's get into drafting. So we draft our first two cards from... This looks very familiar. I, I mean, random is random. I could have just shuffled these together again. But uh, this, look, this does look very familiar. So a mistake I made in the first time I played this game was... Uh, no, it must be great, but some publishers make me more excited than others when they announce games. That's fair, right? And I feel like, you know, the number of Garp Hill games I've played where it was like, ah, this was crap, not high. Um, but it's like, I think a lot of them are like, I feel like this game is going to feel like I'm worried this game is going to be similar to uh, Raiders of the North Sea. Where Raiders of the North Sea is a great game to play once and then never again for like two years because it's just too simple and samey. And I feel like this might be there as well. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, so in any case, this first draft is looking a little uh, suspect. Um, these ships, uh, a mistake I made in this game in one of my first playthroughs is that getting these these ships uh early is actually extremely difficult because like you know you spend three workers well that like right now i have three that would that would be all my workers and then i wouldn't have any workers left for buildings and so on and i gain one every round or whatever but the point is it's hard and i need a total of 11 resources one of which is gold to get this so basically i can't draft these with the intent of taking them and building one of these ships. I should build a easier ship early, more than likely, even though getting one of these out would make it so that I could raid. I won't have the bandwidth to raid anyway. It's super tempting to take this out. I get four, I get up on the to, to the fourth spot on the raid track. I can raid, but then I need two workers to raid and I won't have those workers. So I can't take these for that purpose. I think I am gonna take this one because I can discard it for a worker, which is uh, actually quite valuable. And then as far as these other ones go, I don't know what to do here because let's assume we're not gonna draft this. None of these, we're not intending to build these, so none of these are actually complementary with what we're looking to build. So there's a bit of, we could speculate here about what, I, I think the Weaver is often used in a lot of the less expensive ships. So we could speculatively take the Weaver. Or we could take the Sailmaker because that's another way to get another worker. I don't know. Are workers going to be imp as important this time with buildings costing extra resources? I'm not sure. Let's take the Weaver and just hope that it's the right choice. That's funny. I started streaming and went the opposite direction. Since the 90s, I've been a cult of the new Omni Gamer. I play, only play games once or twice and move on. But with streaming, I'm focusing on playing one game many times. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. I have Paladins, and I feel like I don't need the others. I think that's fair. I mean, I think that uh, Paladins... I, I think that the Garp Hill games, I would say, overall... The Garp Hill games aren't as samey. Like, when I play, like, a Rosenberg game, you know, like Agricola or something like that, or or a Stefan Feld or something, like a designer who, who publishes a lot of games, I feel like there's a lot of similarities there where once you've played one, there's a lot of overlap. And the Shem Phillips games, that's, like, it's kind of it's kind of samey, but not as distinct, right? Like... Scholars is a very different game than Paladins, for instance, even though they share similar art and iconography and stuff like that, right? Which is interesting. Oh my god, okay, so look, we just, this draft just sucks balls, like, okay, we know buildings are more expensive, but like, we haven't even seen a single building as an option. Um, 
And all of these ships are expensive. Uh, and this one, like, it gets us one on either track. That doesn't that doesn't get us to four <laughs> or on, on either one. And this particular scoring condition is super hard. This scoring condition, we get three points for having one of each card, right? So that basically means we want to move up to get maximum bonus points from the ship. We want to move up each of the tracks kind of equally, which is extremely difficult to, to achieve. Um, I think we just take the card draw and hope that it's better than what we had and we hedge our bets. I mean, I could take this carve as like, well, this is a cheaper ship or whatever, but like it also doesn't use the things that we that we need. Um, so like we're just kind of striking out on the draft here, guys. Uh, not happy with that at all. Let's take this blacksmith for reasons. I haven't played Scholars, but Wayfarers and Adventures were way different, even though same South Tigris series. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, honestly, also with the campaign thing, uh, just to get back to that, I was playing more campaign games. We were, when uh, Lady Opcos, my wife, was streaming with me more regularly, uh, our schedule changed, and we really can't, can't do that so much now, uh, which is a shame because we were streaming together and we were playing through, uh, what the heck is it? It's right here. I can't think of what it's called, though. Um, it's going to bug me. And it's not printed on the box because that would be too easy. Oh, my God. I've just drawn a complete blank about the point that I was trying to make. Anyways, I love the idea of doing campaign games on stream and playing them week to week. It's just that I only stream twice and I'm probably not going to stream a campaign game. So if I was streaming more often, I would make like if I added a third day, that day would be a campaign day. Straight up. Isofarian Guard. That's exactly it. Thank you. Why was that so hard? Okay, I'm not taking the third weaver we've seen in this draft. That's going away, and we're just taking this. A fortress, which is going to be extremely hard to make because it costs gold early, which we don't have a lot of extra, but it gets us workers. And... This can get us the gold that we need. So, you know... It was less painful. Okay. The hell are we going to do with these cards now? So, let's see. Uh, Drakkar, we're never building this boat. This is an end game boat, right? And this one, likewise, super expensive. We don't want to actually get either of those. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to discard this Drakkar to use its card draw. And we're going to hope that this card we get is randomly better than it. It is a church. We love the church. We love the church here, okay? This is the church of card draw. Card draw, like I said earlier, I think is... I don't know if it's strong. It's speculative in a way that I think is fun in this game, right? So, uh, having an extra building, not a horrible problem. We do not have enough workers to build both of these buildings. Um... So that's a thing. Now, if we discard our other guy, we gain a worker. Now we do have enough workers to build both of these. But if we actually built them both, then we don't have enough workers to use them. So that doesn't really work for us. So probably we don't actually want to build both of these. Um despite the fact that we like them. Now, we do already have a way to get card draw. I think card draw is powerful, but I don't know that in and of itself it's 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 that good. I don't know. Do we we can either build the church and lean super hard into card draw, right? We just have card draw here for money, card draw here for free. We're drawing all the cards or we build the fortress and then that gives us a way to get um, money and workers. This is probably the correct play, but let's let's go for the stupid speculative play this time, just for shits. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So we're gonna try and build this church. 
it's going to take two workers and one of every resource. But because we suck, <laughs> it's going to require an additional resource, right? That's our thing here. Buildings cost one additional resource of any type to construct. So that means we either have to pay our two money or um, we could like, we can discard this blacksmith that gets us a sheep and we'll just use that as our extra one. So we're going to build the church here. We paid our extra resource that gets us two on the renown track, which is cool. Um, the renown bonus, uh, like renown right now, we're, we're one behind having this renown hero will be the easiest one for us to get you know, based on the position of these, potentially. We don't know what's in that deck. We don't know what, which tracks they're going to move up on. But that's the one that gives us a one resource discount on uh, building ships. That's the one we probably got the most value out of last time. That one and uh, the raid one gaining workers. But the worker one, we only it only does anything for you if you're about to get to four, eight, or twelve on any of these tracks. Whereas this is gonna like you're trying to build ships the whole time, so gating that might not be terrible. Um, so that's cool. Uh, we also potentially could just we could get an upgrade if we put our Jarl in like our hut, for instance. That gives us two more on that renown track. We would be at four. We would get an upgrade. That might even be worth considering doing. Hmm. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to church. Are we going to go to church and the hut? Yes, we are. Even if we got a building or something, we're not going to have enough resources to build it, right? Like, we could, we could build... We don't have enough... Well, we could build this fortress... We just wouldn't get to use it this turn. That feels stupid. Let's not do that. Okay, let's go to church. Let's go to church. Let's draw two cards and see what we get. We want to embrace. We're leaning into the randomness here to, you know. Oh my god, we got a building and, ooh, a forager. We could spend a worker, which we don't have any excess of, in order to gain two cards. Um, I know we talked about liking card draw, but like that might be a little excessive, I think. Uh, if we had a way of gaining workers, that might be fun. But I don't think we... I think we got that a turn too early. Right? And then we got the Longhouse. Uh, which, you know, if we had got that without spending a worker, we might have a way to use it. But we didn't. <laughs> so, um, uh, we will not be building a Longhouse this round. Or any, you know, anytime soon. That gives us one on each track. That would have been nice to get. Sadly, no go. So we're probably, this ability for the Forager is cool, but too expensive. Let's just assume we're going to discard her and gain uh, ore for it. And let's assume we're going to discard our Longhouse and gain a Worker for it, which is pretty cool. And then, uh, I mean, that does actually give us options because we're back to, we could build this fortress this turn. Right? We have the two workers we need. We have one gold, and we could throw out this Jarl and uh, build this with the two gold we would get. We have an extra resource now, even. Right? That would get us up to three on the uh, raid track. So we're almost at the point where we could do raids, which would be really cool. But it would also mean we have only the one worker. I think that's probably really stupid. Let's not do that. Let's not get seduced by the fortress. It's a weird thing to get seduced by, but, you know, welcome to my life. Okay, we're going to discard the fortress before it tempts us further, and we're going to gain a wood for it. And we're going to actually pay our gold to install Thorsten here in the hut, okay? The hut's... The hut costs us a gold to get one card draw, whereas we can get two card draw for free over here. So let's um, install him on the less useful of the two actions, okay? And then we move up one on the trade track. We're never winning the trade track. Like, we'll just forget it. But we move up two on the uh, renowned track, which means we earn an upgrade. And we're going to upgrade this card 
because now instead of, we haven't done any uh, income, we get five phases of income and we're gonna get twice as many workers. Instead of getting one worker every turn, we're gonna get two. So that's gonna be super useful. And uh, that leaves us here with two workers. Uh, we paid this gold to get our friend installed here, okay? So we have a weaver, two workers, and a couple of resources. So let's just keep our weaver for later. Hopefully we'll build a ship that needs one of those skills. Hopefully we'll find one next round. We're gonna, we're, we're, we're leaning into speculating, right? And then I think instead of drawing a card, gaining one card now is unlikely to be super useful for us, right? Um, because we have no other cards. So I think instead of doing this, we're gonna do these two actions. So we'll gain two money and then we'll spend that two money to gain a gold with our remaining workers. And that's, that's it, that's that's our round, okay? Um, so, uh, we get income. We're gonna gain two more workers. We get these guys back. And if we look at the tracks up here, we're going to get our friend Frode. That means it's cheaper for us to build ships. We can ignore one resource of them, but our mean, evil uh, opponent here is going to get the other two, and we are nowhere close. Now, they don't actually do anything with them. It just basically denies us their special ability, uh, which we have to pay a silver. I guess we have to pay a silver to use this. So instead of, we're ignoring a resource, but paying a silver instead. Eh, it's still worth it. Um, and yeah, the, there were three points, so... We want we want the points. Points points good. Points good. But there that that we've done income. We've uh, done our first round. We have one two points after round one, and they've earned ten. But like we talked about, they scale. They don't scale. They they progress linearly, whereas we do scale. So we're okay with that. So of course, for no good reason, they're going to move up one on the trade track and two on the renown track. So if we don't move up on renown this turn, we will lose our friend here uh, and no longer get a discount on um, shipbuilding. So that's stupid. I don't like that at all. Also, all, all the resources are expensive, right? We got three for wood, two for sheep, two for ore. Nothing is extremely cheap this time. Let's see what we get. We draft two cards out of five. Oh, if I had used that card draft, we would have just picked up a Jarl. If only. Could have speculated, didn't. Okay, so the only ship we found was the Drakkar, which is the extremely expensive ship. Uh, we know we don't want that one. Uh, there's also an Artisan here, which we... Don't have a good way of using those abilities. Like, let's just get an additional guy, but our worker, with two worker income, we're actually looking okay on workers. The Conspirator goes directly against our, hey, let's draw a ton of cards scheme, but we can discard a card to get two gold. This is the church, the church conspirator wombo combo, right? We use one worker, we draw two cards, and then we can throw away any of our cards. It doesn't even have to be the ones we drew to gain two gold. So we owe it to ourselves to take that guy. And then <clears throat> we can either embrace more gold or the raider. We could use this raider's ability one time. You know, when we discard uh, one of these townspeople, uh, we can either take what's shown on the right or we can use their ability one time. They can otherwise be like, you know, in, placed into a building uh, and we can use that ability multiple times. But um, I don't know. Do we need a gold? <clears throat> or do we want to Do we want to hang on to this? Like, I don't like the idea of getting a lot of these um, Jarls early. Because, you know, I'd rather have a building that is twice as good than 
you know, blocking it with a Yarl. But would I rather have one gold or two resources and a gold or a silver and one fewer worker? I think probably a gold. Oh, whoops. I did that wrong. There. So we'll draft those two. And then let's see what else we get. All right, so we got some ships. We still haven't found the lucrative, inexpensive ship. We've just wholesale struck out on that as an idea uh, so far. We know we can't take the Drakkar. It's like the most expensive ship. Now, this ship uh, does um, give us... Uh, like, it, it does use the secondary ability of our of our weaver. So we would pay just a gold to access that. We don't have this one. And it would cost us a card, a gold, and a silver to use our laborer if we don't have it. So that one's really expensive. Now, we can't get it from these other ones. Um, I don't love this ship, but I think we take it as a... We got to start working on a ship eventually. And worst case, we throw it out for a worker... And then these guys, like the Sailmaker would mean we don't spend our Weaver, we don't spend a dollar to do it. So, we could just take that. We could also just take the Blacksmith and throw it out, throw it out and, and get something else. You know? Nah, let's take the Sailmaker. Because then we keep our Weaver for some other later ship. Especially because we know we've burned like every Weaver in the deck. We saw all of them in the first round, right? Now we pick two cards from these two. Uh, okay. So the extremely expensive Kanar, we're just not doing. We're going to take the Bard, which gives us renown and, uh, you know, gives us card draw. Only one time immediately, but whatever. We like card draw. And then the Boathouse, which we can either build... Um, or we can discard for card draw. I think getting one of these things actually might not be terrible because this gives us wood and having access to like just an abundance of extra basic resources might not be terrible because buildings cost us more and all that sort of stuff. So I think that was an acceptable but not amazing draft. And now we have to figure out what the heck we're going to do with it. So I think... Goal number one, spend our gold to place our conspirator in the church. And then go to church, draw two cards. A Jarl and a Recruiter. Recruiter is going to be nice to have. Money for workers. Um, you know, we could also just try not to worry about workers so much. Maybe don't plan to raid and... And then we don't need to spend workers all the time. And we don't have to be as worried about that. Um, but now if we discard a card, we can gain two. Uh, ooh, what do we discard, though? Do we discard that recruiter? We don't have a building to put him in. I mean, we, would have, we could build the boathouse and then put him in there. But then... Let's just let's just try. We'll, we'll go worker lean this time. We're trying new things. We're trying new things. We'll discard that guy. Gain two gold. <clears throat> okay. So. Uh, which of these do we want to work on both of these or one first this is not super valuable for us let's work on this one first it gets us the lucrative card draw so let's just put that guy up here and let's see what we have toward it so far we have one wood one worker one ore we also do not have that so we'd have to pay this guy a boatload to get it, right? We have to pay a silver, discard a card, and a gold. 
Yikes. That is rough. Hmm. I mean, maybe we're just not able to build this one this round. I'm not sure. We also have this one. Do we want to commit to this? Or do we just want to discard it? I don't know. Uh, we certainly can't get this one this round. Because it's quite a bit more expensive. And it requires that the one thing that we don't have anyway. Right? So. That was weird. Anyways. um, Okay. Let's say we built the boathouse. What would that do for us? We'd have an extra building to use, uh, which gets us some basic resources, which mostly just enables us to, you know, do more, uh, like, that helps us to build more buildings and not much else, right? Um, it would cost us a worker, a wood, two ore, which we do not have. We only have one and an additional resource so it either would cost us both it would cost us a gold and our our only two money so that's extremely expensive uh alternatively i mean we could throw away our sail maker i mean do we need this boathouse i guess what the hell am i trying to do here i kind of want the boathouse but then it just sort of traps me in building more buildings, right? If I build the boathouse, I can install Aslog, the, uh, um, the meanie, the, the, the scary looking lady in it. And then we can, uh, we'd be in the lead on the Renown track. Or I could install Ivor and we would tie on the renown track which means we keep the card but we would also uh move up two on the raid track we'd be really close to being able to actually raid uh or at least you know get that bonus uh, unlock deny them the card so i think the boathouse is worth it for that reason But it's hard to know because, I mean, we could also just, like, throw these out, get some gold, and, you know, use the gold to build a ship. I don't know. Let's try the boathouse. Let's try the boathouse. Okay. One, two, three, four, and we're going to discard the sailmaker as our additional resource. That gives us a sheep. We built the boathouse. We gain one on the trade track, which we don't really care about. Uh, I think we're going to go with Ivor. We're going to pay one gold to install a Jarl. Oof. Yeah, because we want to stay ahead on those tracks. Right? And, or tied at least. I don't like reducing our boathouse. We don't have that many buildings. They're expensive to get. Ruining it with a Jarl feels bad, but whatever. We're trying new things. We are trying new things. So we're doing it. So that gives us two on the raid track. One on the uh, renown track. And then we're left with three workers, two bucks, a gold, and Azalag. Now, we don't have a home for her, so she's just going to end up discarding or being discarded for a gold. Okay. And then with our three workers here, we can gain two wood. And then we could either draw a card. It's the same as last time. We're not really intending to use our hut. Maybe once it's upgraded, right? We can go over here and basically gain two money and then spend that two money for an additional gold. Uh, and then, oh, I guess we have this card still. Did we want to just commit to doing this later? We're kind of going hard on the Renown track. Um, I, getting the upgrades isn't terrible. Not having to discard a card and only pay a gold and a silver for our laborer would be super sweet. Because um, it's either we discard this for a worker, which, like... We're going to have six workers. I, I think we're doing okay on workers right now. Um, yeah, let's keep it. Let's just keep it. Let's keep it. We'll see what happens. Okay, so we get income. We get two workers. That's it. We gain our workers back. Uh, we assess the tracks. We get to keep this guy because uh, our friend didn't surpass us. 
Uh, we still don't have the other two, and we are nowhere close to it, really. Sucks to suck. Okay. What's going to happen this next round? They're going to move up two on the raid track, one on the renowned track. So they're just trying to piss us off on this one, like, continuously. But that's okay. Because we're going to outdraft them. We have earned three points to their 20. Now they got a 16. They're at 36. We're at three. Surely this round will upset the balance a little bit. All right, what do we got here? We got the Longhouse. That was the one that we were actually most interested in because it gives us a little on all of the tracks as well as uh, some resource and income opportunity. Um, we have really invested a lot in buildings, though. I don't know. Um, the Skipsbot is one of those inexpensive ships that we were talking about, right? So this just gives us a one-time boost of three workers. Uh, it's also worth five points and some spot on the trade track. This, critically, if we get two, that puts us at four up here. And that lets us take one of the um, trade cards, which basically gives us additional income. So getting that now would be really good. Uh, and we already have this ability on our Weaver, right? That means we don't have it for our other two ships, but that's a problem for later, right? Uh, we can't keep taking these Jarls too much. But we know we want to take this ship. Do we want to take this longhouse? I think we probably do. It gets us a little bit of everything. We're trying to, we're just trying to catch up on the tracks. That doesn't feel like a good play, but it's what we're trying to do this particular time for reasons. So let's just do it. All right. So we got those two. And then in our next draft, we found another like kind of inexpensive ship that's going to give us trade. We found Snicke, the the moderately, yeah, I don't know. This would set us up. We could raid. And uh, this one is, this is an, another expensive one, right? So we got, we found four ships, basically. Let's, we're taking two ships. Let's take the gold income ship because that also uses our weaver and is inexpensive and gives us things we like. And we, we decided not to be militaristic this time. So this would let us get, I mean, these, these two things will let us get to the point either one of them would let us get to where we could raid um, if we got both of them and this that would let us get to the point where we could raid for less fewer workers which is really important we're also kind of just generally getting a whole heck of a lot of increases to um, trade Right? We're just sort of finding them despite ourselves. So do we just take the trade? Yeah, whatever. We're just going to take... We're not We're not being militaristic. We're just taking the trade ship and going for it. We don't have the spare worker bandwidth to go raiding often, so we're not going to try. All right. Two more cards from these three. Bard, another less expensive ship with card draw on it. So we already have one of those. You can get duplicates. Not crazy. It would be really nice to see any of the things that we need on the top because our laborers are more expensive and we really have not seen those. The wood carver doesn't give us the ones we need. It does give us another stitch, uh, if which we need on the two ships that we've drawn this time. The huntsman, two, two just using this ability two bucks for two resources is really like that's pretty tempting um we don't have good income opportunities until we get our longhouse out but drawing that might be worth it and then of these ones i don't know really we're gonna need iron we we need we need a majillion resources that we haven't got largely so
Also, I feel like I activated the boathouse last round, but I must not have. No, I totally did. So where's the wood from it? Because I didn't spend that on anything, I don't think. Yeah, what would I have spent it on? The boathouse was the last thing we built. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I that I, I made a mistake there, but I don't know. Let's take the huntsman, huntsman and the woodcarver. Oh, whoops. Okay, so a challenge here is we are now getting to that part of the game that isn't obvious when you're playing it initially, but it's like these... Uh, we only have five spots here and we need to gain access to these abilities and we kind of speculatively took these. Now we can discard them, but like then we're just full, fully wasting the card. If we do that, we don't get the benefit of them. So we only have five spots and if I like, you know, put these ships up here, well then I don't actually have a way of gaining, like I have no more space to place these uh, workers who provide me with those things right so that's tough um so i gotta be really intentional about what goes up here now this one gives us gold income and it uses the ability we already have on our weaver so we almost for sure want to build this one this turn i just don't know if we want to build it yet you know that's that's a tricky tricky thing that i don't know um so gotta be you know, a little considerate of that, I think. Also, I just, I'm, I'm sneaking my way back. I wanted to see, did I use this boathouse? I totally did. And I totally did not take the wood from it by mistake I'm not crazy because I did I got distracted I took the gold as well and I forgot to take the wood so I'm taking that now retroactively yay streaming okay so do we build our longhouse first uh, we have what we need for it other than sheep sheep are super expensive this time and we need an additional resource which could be this um, no no, we don't do that. Let's not be crazy. The first thing we do is go to church every round, right? Surely we pray, see what we get. A berserker and a stonemason. The stonemason actually has the trait we need for some of our, sh our uh, ships, so that's super useful. Berserker, discard a card for three resources could also be super useful. So... I'd rather discard a card than dis than pay two money for two. Like, discard a card for three is better than pay two money for two. So we're going to use this guy as our discard for our church action to gain two gold, right? Because two gold's better than two of whatever else. And then, I don't know that we have an additional card to use for this, but if we go over here, we haven't built that yet. If we go over here and pay a dollar... That gets us a card. We don't really want to carve. I don't like this ship. This wind condition is too hard to do. And I like our other ships better. So now we can use this one. We can play our Berserker. We'll discard him to gain his ability. Discard a card for three resources. And this will be the card we get rid of. So we basically, in a very convoluted way, we turned a silver into... Um, three resources. So what three do we want? Uh, we can get more wood. We never need... We, we should be avoiding taking wood wherever possible. We need sheep. And if we want to build any of these ships, we're going to need sheep and ore. Um, ore is dirt cheap. So, two sheep. And another sheep. Let's just take three sheep as our thing. Okay. The thing we're going to happen have happen here is we're going to run out of workers, just like every time, right? Because, like, if I build this longhouse, that's going to cost me two workers. 
And then a, sh a ship is going to cost me another worker. But the longhouse gets us resources and money. I think we got to do it. That means we can only build a ship that costs us one. Which could be our skip spat. That gets us more workers. That's totally the ship we should build. We don't have the thing for it. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Or this ship. Which also costs one. Okay, whatever. Two workers. A sheep. A gold. And an extra... Uh, an extra resource of any type. We're paying a money as an ore for our extra resource that we need. So we've built our longhouse now. Um, we gain one on each track. That means that we get a raid card. So in order to use this, we would need to spend two workers currently because our raid strength is four. Um, so it would cost us two workers to gain a gold and three money, which is like a lot, but we don't have the bandwidth for that right now if we want to go get one of these ships, right? And this ship is gold income. So the earlier we do it, the more uh, we get. And it, this would also give us, we get to four on the um, trade track as well, which gives us another income opportunity. So we really do want to actually build this ship while it's out. It gives us, we have this from our weaver. It gives us income. Uh, it, it makes us happy all around. So what do we need? One guy, three wood. We only have two wood, a sheep. That's a sheep. And then two ore, which we could use gold for because we don't unfortunately have even though ore only costs a dollar, we have no money, right? Um, now, we could actually go here to the longhouse. Instead of going to the boathouse, we could go to the longhouse. That lets us get a resource. We could get wood. And then two bucks, which is our two ore. Let's do that. So we gain a wood. And two dollars. And then we have enough to build this ship. We have our weaver here. We don't have to pay her. We have all the things on it because that's our two ore. So we'll discard our weaver. We don't get the reward. Get rid of all these things. And now we launch that ship. We increase one on our raid track. We increase one on our trade track. Uh, and then we'll have an income of one gold every round. So that's pretty big. Why does this water look like pee? Uh, oh, on this card? Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to swim. I wouldn't want to swim in that water either. I'm not really sure. I don't know that it, it's a little more, it's a little too green. If your pee looks that color, go to the doctor. But, um, it definitely doesn't look like nice, clear, Maybe on camera it looks a little bit more yellow than in person, but yeah, don't don't swim in there. It, it's Vikings, but it's actually like toxic waste, like nuclear waste or something. I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, we do get a trade card, so this means we immediately either gain a sheep and a ore, or we get a one wood every round. Um, we are going to collect income four more times. Uh, so I think we take that as income. It sort of feels bad. I would have liked something better than wood because we wood's the only other one we can get. But that basically is a hedge against our extra costs, right? If nothing else. Uh, and then I think we're basically kind of tapped out now, right? We got We got no workers, so we can't build anything. None of these allow us to gain an additional worker. Um, this is the problem, of course. And we knew this would be a problem. I'd love to build one of these other ships, but, like, they're super expensive. I'd also love to raid, but we need workers for that. And we just, we know that that's not going to be a thing for us. 
So the question is, what do we do with our remaining four cards in hand? If we just discard them, we get two ore, a sheep, and two bucks. Which, in and of itself, isn't terrible. Um... I think we keep our stonemason, right? Because he provides the axe that we need on either of those ships. So that's kind of important. I really wouldn't mind building this skips bot just because the one time benefit it gives us is three additional workers. And we're, we didn't gain anything down here to give us more workers. And like we currently have three We'll have five next round because of income. But if we build like this ship, for instance, we'll be down to two. Right? So we really do need to gain some additional workers. So I think maybe keeping this guy here, not terrible. Uh, it also gets us a little closer on that trade track. This one we only have because it was there, right? That also gets us closer on the trade track. But like, I mean... I guess our stonemason uses the same thing. It would give us resources. This feels weak for us right now, right? I suppose if we built both of these next round, let's just imagine a world where we do that. We'd gain our workers back. We'd gain some other resources. And then we'd gain four on that track, which would mean we're actually, we get another one of the income cards. That's not, like, the wildest idea. And we do have a bunch of gold. It's probably going to cost us most of our gold to do that. But it's, like, it's not crazy. It's not crazy. And we got our wood carver here, which doesn't provide us the things we need for any of our ships, really. So, not even really. It just literally doesn't. So let's just discard that guy for an ore and let's let's keep these we're playing speculative this round we're gonna keep these guys we're gonna go for the trade upgrade we've never tried that ever what what could go wrong we didn't raid but we'll try and do that next time so we get our income this time we get two workers a wood and a gold so our income is significantly better than it was that's cool. I like that. Uh, and then we keep this card and we don't get the other ones. And sadly, there are two more rounds of play left. In like, I feel targeted by the bot. I know these are random, but it's like the bot just moved up on, two on the stupid trade track. We were going to move four, and it moved two ahead, because, you know. And it moved one ahead of us on Renown. So we're probably going to lose our Renown. Oh, hey, you know what? I uh, I forgot about our bonus of we could have spent one fewer resource. I'm not going to look at the resource costs. I'm just going to imagine I would have kept an ore. Because we can't get ore. And we had just traded for a bunch of sheep. I'm just going to retcon that. I don't, I don't feel bad about it at all. Okay, so we draft. Second last round. I do not feel like we're doing nearly as well as last time. Uh, oh, a really good trading ship, but we have literally no space for it. And we can't use these cards from hand to prov provide their like uh, things. They need to be on the board right um which sucks because well i think we build we want to build these we want to build all three of these this round but we can't like not even close i mean maybe we could just get rid of this guy I, how useful is he anyway i don't know because the sail maker has the little shears also, maybe we could keep the sailmaker. We put her in the longhouse. We could hire her. Then we don't have to. Then we get her abilities permanently. Uh, maybe that's worth doing. I think we draft the sailmaker for sure. Um, now we don't have a ton of room for stuff. I think we draft this birding. We don't have room for a ship, but 
in a world where we do <laughs> sometime in the future right uh this gives us two which is critical because two additional attack puts us at that that break point at seven one it ties us up and it also means that we only have to spend one worker to raid instead of two that which like with two workers we're never raiding ever for one worker we might right so let's take those as our first two cards and let's see what our next two cards are man i don't know what's going on here what do our reserve or is super expensive the weaver gets us another worker we don't have a way to get workers we're probably worker shy just putting activating all of our buildings costs us four and we know we want to build two boats boats this round i know that gets us a little bit more but let's take the weaver just for that that income and then we don't want the ship because we're not going hard on that the Carpenter is the most likely to be useful. It works for some of our other things. And it gives us an ore just like the ship would. And then our final two. Another Skipsbot. Another Stonemason that we have. Uh, which isn't the one we really need, but isn't terrible to have. Well, we're not taking the super military ship. We know that. So we'll just throw that out. And that's our draft. Okay. So what do we do with it now? We don't have any buildings to build. So we don't have to worry about that. And we actually literally can't play any of these cards. So, okay. <laughs> Either this is going to work out really well. Or this was a like like an absolutely stupid mistake. Because... I filled the whole thing, the whole blue area of the board here with cards last time. We only have five slots to use. And then literally every card I drafted is blue. So the only thing I can do with them is discard them for resources or place them on the board that has no space. So either I'm a genius or an idiot. I'll leave it up to you guys. Um, but I think we know that we were going to hire the sailmaker because she works for two of the ships currently. And then also for this ship, which is the same as the one we have, and for this one. Okay, so we're hiring the sailmaker. So we're paying a gold to do that. Okay, that means that we could now complete our skip spat, and she provides that even though she's not on the board, which is super important. Because uh, this gives us a bunch of extra workers, right? So doing that wouldn't be horrible okay so i think we just ignore all of these for now we can discard our weaver maybe but like we just pretend we didn't have any cards and we figure out how are we making this skip spat now r the ore are the most expensive but we can pay one fewer so our our ore is complete that is our sheep. We just need a wood. And we can go get, go here and gain two. There we go. So we go to the boathouse. We gain uh, two wood. I'm not going to build this yet because I'm going to remember we should always go to church. We draw two. That gives us options, right? Oh, we got a building and a Dude, these are completely, wildly different options. That's cool. Um, I think we get rid of this one for two gold. By the time we build it and use it, we'll get, we'll get more gold just by discarding it. And that means this one goes into our hand. If we use this, we could discard a card for five silver, which is huge. We don't have a lot. It's only dumb if it doesn't work. Well, I think there's a lot of potential that it doesn't work, Cosmic Beat. That's the challenge. All right, let's do this. We're paying our worker, our two wood, our one sheep, and our two, uh, or we're ignoring one of those so we can get our skips bot. It gives us two on the market track and th a one-time boost of three workers. 
It's also worth five points to us. So we have enough workers to actually do stuff now, which is big. Um, now, we had talked about getting this Fergie, Ferge, I don't know. If we get that this round, then we get another one of the income cards. It's worth a wood. We're only going to collect on it twice. Um, to be honest, it's probably not even worth taking it as income anymore. It's probably better just to take the bonus at the top. But the bonus at the top might not be terrible. And this also gives us additional resources. Uh, our stonemason can provide that. So it would just be these, two wood, and then the remaining resources, which are non-trivial to get, to be clear. Uh, alternatively, we could, you know, play out one of our other cards, our, our birding. That would let us raid for only one guy. We probably have enough guys to raid, but they get wasted. They're spent. So raiding for fewer would be really nice. Um, birding uses, we'd have to pay a silver, which we don't have actually. So that's a tough one. Um, we could gain silver here, but then that costs us. Hmm. Okay. Let's play out our birding card. And let's do use our mercenary. So we have to discard a card in order to gain five silver. So what card do we not need? Probably our weaver. Well, that gets us a worker. Well, we just got a couple workers. Um, do we need our carpenter? Yeah, that's that. These two things. We definitely need the carpenter. The stonemason's excess, or like like a duplicate. Let's just get rid of him. We'll get our five silver. There we go. We got some money now, though. We had, we had none. All right. So, we played out our birding card here. And, I mean, if we're willing to dig into our gold... We might even actually be able to complete both of these. We have our workers set aside. I set aside the work, the things that I have. This one provides us with two resources. And we're probably consuming the trade card we'll get for resources. And we have two leftover workers, or three. So we could use the longhouse, get the resources we need to complete this, and then because of all the resources we gain, we probably get enough to complete that one. Maybe. <laughs> Let's try. So, let's spend our one kind of extra worker that we have to go to the longhouse. Uh, ore is the most expensive resource, so we're going to take ore and two silver. Okay, now, that means that we have our ore complete because we can still ignore one resource. Right? Oh, we have to pay a silver to do that. I didn't pay that last time, I don't think. I don't know if I did. We'll pay two silver and call it even. Now, we don't have a sheep, and we don't have a way to get a sheep. Uh, so we're either paying two bucks for it or a gold. Um, let's let's pay the resources or the the silver. So we'll pay two bucks for a sheep, two bucks for a wood. And we'll ignore one of those, but we have to pay for it. And we'll pay an extra one in case I forgot last time. Because I'm pretty sure I did. All right. So we spent almost all of our money, but we get to play this out that gives us two on the uh trade track that means we get an additional trade card okay so we either get one ore as income every time or a sheep and a wood right now so we'll collect this income twice but we collect one of those at the end of the game essentially where we can only it, it's worth functionally a third of a point so i think we just take the one time benefit and we go for the sheep and the wood once again that's not really what we wanted to see on that card but that's okay we also get a one-time perk from building this of gaining any two resources so when we look at what we need for birding here well ore is the most expensive but we only need one actually you know what we can just gain these two sheep and then we can ignore the ore and we actually have what we need in order to get it so it all worked out and we didn't even dip into our gold actually 
which seems really weird, but cool. The un only unfortunate thing is that we didn't have enough bandwidth to go raid. As we'll complete this, and we'll be at seven where it only costs us one, but we don't actually have a worker to use. Welcome to literally every time I've played this game. Oh, we have to spend our dollar to pay for our... Oh, this guy's out. It was his primary ability. We gotta spend a doll our final dollar to pay our sail weaver or whatever her name is to do this. <clears throat> Those are gone. But we got another ship out. And that means we move up two on the military track. We're not in the lead, but we're thinking about it, and we get four bucks. And we are now at seven for raiding, so only one to raid. If we get another one attack, that means we'll uh, have two options for where to raid. Uh, but we don't have any workers. We're completely tapped out. This is, this is the end of our round, I think. So we get income. We get two workers, a wood, and a gold. We gain our workers back. And then nobody actually, or I guess he keeps the the thing. Oh, we lose this guy. We have to pay full value for ships now. That sucks. Unlucky. All right. We're paying full value for ships. We don't like that. But what are you going to do? Last round of play. So, ore is dirt cheap. Wood is expensive. He moves up one on the attack track and two on the renown. Oof. Okay, so, if we do nothing else, this is the last round of play. If we move past him on all of these, it's effectively 18 points, right? He loses three and we gain three per track because he's in the lead on all of them currently. I don't think that that's worth it. It's probably better to, like, if we built these two ships instead, for instance, that would also be 18 points. And then we'd win on one of the tracks. So I think we just, we don't try to beat him on the tracks. We try to, you know, play with what's in our hand. Oh, wait, you know what? I didn't use up these three cards from last round. Uh, whoopsie doodles. We would have put the carpenter out. We would have discarded the weaver. We would have used her. Oh my God, that's so. Okay, we're gonna pretend we didn't do this. Mystery solved. Look, I have this carpenter, weaver, and the other skip spot in my hand that I forgot about. I would have played the carpenter. The weaver was the extra worker that I needed in order to go raid. So that would have left me with a gold and three bucks. And then the skip spot we were going to put out because potentially it gets us additional workers, right? Whoops. Kind of forgot that last round. Pro streamer, by the way. Uh, the good news is we've reconciled that. And uh, we're just going to pretend it never happened. Everything's good. So we're going to draft for the final round of play. What do we get? A gatekeeper. That would have been cool some other time. More ships We are not what we need because we're really... We already have more ships than we can really complete. Sailmaker, we don't need either because we, we hired one permanently. Um, so that leaves us with the gatekeeper, which we really don't like. And the blacksmith, which doesn't provide us with a skill that we need for any of our abilities. So the gatekeeper, we could either throw off for a card or use her one-time ability. We have lots of gold. A gold for two workers and a money might be worth it situationally. Um, and then... Oh yeah, we're not going to build one of these ships, so what do we get for discarding these? Draw cards or get 
iron ore. Iron ore is the least valuable. The blacksmith's functionally worth two ore. Um, I don't know. Let's take the blacksmith, I guess. Fully supportive of retconning things in solo as long as one is not going off of information you wouldn't have known. Yeah, me too. And I tried really hard to like not look at like the new trade rate and stuff because I wouldn't have known that. And I think I, I reconciled that kind of fairly because um, that would have been like a game ruining mistake, you know? So. Okay, Woodcarver likewise does not provide us with anything we need. Ilva, if we had a place to put this, it would be worth a point and one on each track, which like is back in that, you know, we're not trying to win those tracks like uh, intentionally, but if we can just sort of like get there anyway, uh, like and deny some points, each time we do that is six points, which is pretty cool. So let's take Ilva and then two Let's let's lean into that card draw we talked about in the very at the very start that we never really got to like we've used the church every time but like two bucks for two cards those two cards are going to be worth more than two dollars worth of whatever and like we already have this skip spot to get more guys or the gatekeeper so I don't think we need the watchman for the additional dudes so let's take those two. And then our final draft is basically just pick a card not to keep, right? So another birding, a weaver which, and a sailmaker. Man, we fought, found every weaver and sailmaker the whole time. We already hired a sailmaker, so it's completely worthless other than giving us a wood, which is the only resource that we can go get. Uh, we do need a lot of wood, and it is the only expensive one. It costs three. Um... So, I mean, wood's worth more than sheep, so maybe let's get rid of the, <clears throat> of the weaver. Okay. So, what's our goal here? Let's think this out. So, our goal is to be build our ships, right? Um, and in so doing, we may or may not kind of edge out the um the opponent now i would like to getting ilva and gaining one on each track actually really helps us because for instance if we build our skip spot we're going to be tied when you're tied you don't gain the card it's actually one of the only rules ambiguities in this game that actually i should probably figure out now because it probably makes a big difference in in how this works but I mean, I guess we played it the same way the whole time. We should just be internally consistent. If you're tied, no player gains the card. I think that that means the player who has it continues to keep it. So we need to surpass um, the opponent on these tracks in order to get it. So if we get our skip spat, for instance, we're tied. That means if we get one more, we deny them six or we gain six points functionally, right? So getting Ilva gets us one on each of the tracks that would also tie us here and potentially make it on that track where we could do the same sort of thing so ilva would be cool to get but the problem is we do not have a building we did not see one to draft at all um so the first thing we're gonna do as always is go to church so let's just draw two cards hey a treasury that's a building and a scoot that is not a building and is not particularly useful to us. So we're going to discard it and take our two gold. We have a ton of gold. Gold's worth points. So we don't want to be too wasteful. If we're using it for buildings, we always want to, or, or anything else, we always want to make sure we're getting more out than we're putting in. That's the challenge with the treasury here. What's it cost? Two workers, an ore, and a gold, and one additional resource, which we would pay a dollar to be ore, because ore is cheap. 
fact, we would just pay $2 a gold and two workers for this treasury. Do I need to do that immediately? I don't know. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so. Two workers. What else am I doing to get workers? I'm building skip spot. Okay, let's not do the treasury because I don't want to screw this up and not be able to get this and then like not have enough workers. So let's do this first. So we have our sail maker providing the uh, the skills that we need. We need one worker. We need two wood. We have to pay full price for this. We no longer have the card that lets us uh, ignore any. So that sucks. So we need two wood, uh, sheep, and three ore. Or fortunately, quite fortuitously, in the last round is only a, a buck. So we can just pay three bucks for the ore. So we just need one wood and one sheep in order to do this. So probably we're going to use our abilities down here. We're going to go get two wood from the boathouse. And we're going to go to the longhouse. And gain a sheep. And two dollars. And then that means we have enough here. We got our resources. Three ore, a sheep, two wood, and a guy. So we're going to build... Uh, the other skip spot. Okay, that gives us two on the market track, the trade track. So we're tied now. Okay, which means we'll surpass them when we get our uh, Jarl down here. Okay, and then it also gives us three workers. Critically, so we have some workers to use to go do stuff. So... Now, if we build our treasury, it's two workers, two ore, which we're paying money for, and a gold. We have to pay an extra ore because of the, the thing that we're using there uh, that's expensive or adds one to the cost of all buildings. Two workers, a gold, and our two ore. It's our extra expense paid. Then we're going to spend a gold. Oh, yeah, this one doesn't get us anything other uh, most of the buildings give us tracks, position on the tracks. That one doesn't. But we're going to spend a gold to put Ilva here in the treasury. So she's going to give us one raiding thing. That gives us a raid card worth a ton of money. Okay. Uh, one on the trade track that puts us in the lead. If we go one further, it gets us another like one time, cup, two resources probably. So probably not worth it, but if it happens, we wouldn't cry. And we move up one on the Renown. If we get a, one further on the Renown, we get to flip over one of these other ones, which will make it uh, a little bit... Uh, they're also worth points. So that worked out pretty okay. Now we only have two workers left. Once again, workers are really, really, really hard to come by in this game. So this ship just straight up we we don't have enough workers we only have we would need three workers to get this ship right um and we only have two now we can maybe get one another way do any of these allow us to get workers no so this is what i was well oh i guess the gatekeeper we talked about this i think we just do this we discard the gatekeeper to use its ability we pay a gold to gain two workers and a money because we'll find a way, a silver. We'll find a way to use that. Okay, so now we could get this. Because this ship is interesting. So this ship would get us the upgrade. That, uh, because we'd get enough renown here that we would gain an upgrade. Okay? That renown, um... The upgrade's worth two points, and then it's worth an additional two points down here because for each upgrade we've done, it's two two bonus points, right? So essentially, we'd get 12 plus four, and we would get the one military we need that would uh, deny them. It would mean we gain Svend, and they don't. So essentially, this is like uh, we gain... 
16 plus 6. Like, this is a 22-point ship if we build it. That's kind of huge. Uh, we also have the skills we need to do it, right? By contrast, Bard doesn't get us the six-point thing, and it doesn't get us the bonus four points here. And it's worth a lot less overall, but it does let us draft two cards. So we could speculatively... I mean, we have enough workers that we can build both of these ships. But we do not have anywhere close to the resources required. Right? Like, it's it's foolishly far away. We have one wood. And five bucks. And that's it. <clears throat> we have this blacksmith which we took explicitly to discard for money. So that gets us seven bucks. We also have the sail maker that we don't need. So we can discard her. Yeah, there's nowhere else where we need to discard something in order to get uh, you know, to earn anything. So that gets us a wood. And then we could optionally either gain a new wood or we could do what we said we were going to do. We're going to use the lookout's ability. We're going to spend two bucks to draft two cards and we're just going to hope that they're good and useful. I mean, they weren't not useful, right? Uh, we can discard the mining camp for a wood which is what we would have got anyway. And then we can discard the adventurer to get two more cards and um, a money. We're, we're very actively burning through our gold here, which I'm trying to be aware of, but, uh, you know, nonetheless, let's do it. So we'll discard the mining cap for, camp rather for a wood, and we'll discard the adventurer, use her ability, pay a gold, gain two cards, and gain a money. A, the merchant, we've, we've actually, like, this is, the couple drafts we've got stuck with nothing but ships, and this is, like, the, the polar opposite of that, where all we're getting is, like, uh, cards that have abilities, like the townsfolk, which is really nice. Now, the blacksmith, once again, still useless, so we'll discard him for a wood, and then I think because we need so many resources... Turning one gold into two other resources is completely worth it here. So we'll use the merchant. And we get two resources and a, and a silver. So what two resources do we want? Uh, the most expensive resource is wood, but we actually have enough wood to build both of these ships currently. Uh, so the next most expensive resource is sheep, and we need seven of them. So uh, how about two sheep then? And then our birding, we're not going to build this guy, so we're going to discard him to gain a card, and we're just going to hope that it's better. That lets us get a worker, which we don't... I, I mean, it's not terrible. That means we can raid. So we'll discard the carpenter to gain a worker. Because we're going to need one worker here, and three workers here. That leaves us with one additional worker. So we could either go to the treasury and gain a gold, or we could send him raiding and gain uh, a gold and three money. If our military might here gave us two military instead of one, it would get us to the break point here at 10, where we would actually not need any workers in order to go raiding. But we didn't, we, we can't do everything. And we, we, we weren't trying to be militaristic this time. So that's not going to work out. So. Uh, why would I take a gold when I could instead take a gold and three dollars, right? I'm going to spend this worker. I'm going to go raid here. A gold, three bucks. Now, this is all we are getting. And we have to make it work with what we have in front of us here. Uh... And we're going to have to pay the laborer at least once to build both ships. Because we have a carpenter, but he can't provide an axe on both of these. He can only do it one time and he gets used up. So, can we do this? We have, we have one worker. We have one wood. We need an additional sheep. Sheep are, are two bucks. 
four are only one dollar. So let's use our money before we use our gold, I think. Because this lets us draw two cards, which might give us something else. So we'll pay two, two silver as a sheep and two silver as ore. And we'll use our carpenter and his major skill in order to build the bard. Okay, so we'll put that out in the water. That gets us two renown. One, two, that lets us get an upgrade. That means we can flip our laborer here so he's worth two points and we no longer have to discard a card to use him, which is really important because we don't actually have an abundance of cards. And the one-time bonus for the bard is two cards. Uh, funny enough, a skip spot, which we've built two of, <laughs> right? And, and this one, like... Uh, it gives us three workers. That's the main thing we're missing. If we built this instead of our, our other ship, we might actually be able to get that one as well, uh, just by virtue of having the additional workers. Uh, I don't know, though. Posture check. Hydrate. Thanks for taking care of me. I'm actually going to open this very questionable spiced coca-cola it says spiced it's really raspberry flavored a pro streamer hey, hey yeah yeah risto with all the redeems thank you when i was drinking that it really freaked out that was kind of funny all right so Can we abuse the skip spot in order to get both of these? I mean, this is a 20-point move, so if we use the skip spot and we fuck it up, it's definitely not worth it. The biggest problem we're going to have is, is sheep, I think, actually. So, uh, let's discard the boathouse. We know we're not building the boathouse. That gives us two additional money. I took three by mistake. All right. So, if we put the skip spot out, we would spend one, two, three dollars in ore, and two dollars in sheep. We'll gain three additional workers. Those workers could get us extra gold or $5, which we can turn into a whole bunch of resources. We ultimately over here have one of the resources we need and we need two gold. And then we need three wood. That's gonna be provided by gold. Four sheep. So that would be one gold is a sheep and uh, actually we can't use that gold as a sheep. We'll have to pay it to our laborer. So what would we have? We'd have our two gold, our three wood, and one sheep. We would still need three additional sheep and one ore. So the raiders that we get from this, if we send one here, we can get an an ore and two sheep. We're two dollars short of being able to do it, but we can send another guy here to get the final two dollars. So this works out. We can just min max where we get the skip spot and have just enough resources to get this other one. Let's do it. money. Sure. So we'll pay one guy to go raiding. He'll get us five bucks. Thank you for your service, my man. Okay. 
Okay, I'm not reading that joke out, Risto. Little, little iffy, that one. Okay, so we got a ton of money now. Uh, and we got two extra workers. We can just send one to the treasury. Oh, wait, we only have one extra worker. So maybe we don't want to send him to the treasury, just, just in case. In case I screwed up here, which I probably did. Okay, so we have one wood. Wood, it costs us three to get. So we need two gold. We also need to pay the laborer a gold and a, and a money in order to activate the carpentry skill. So then we need two wood. That's like six bucks worth of, of wood. And then we need three sheep or four sheep and an ore. We have one gold left. But let's see if we have enough money to pay for it straight up. So sheep are two each, or the ore is a dollar. And then sheep are two each. Two, four, six, eight. So we'll pay nine bucks for four sheep and an ore. Two gold, three wood. We'll use two gold as wood, and three workers. So we did it. I didn't screw it up. It's a miracle. All right, so we built the uh, bus, bussin', <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> whatever. That one's out. We gain one on the raid track. That's going to be enough to deny them. And we gain two on the renown track, which is also going to be enough to deny them. It's a real shame we didn't get this one more. That would have been worth like three or four points to us. It'd be even more impactful if I was showing you what I was talking about. Uh, pro streamer, by the way. Uh, but if we got one more here, we would have uh, earned two additional points plus the points for upgrading our card. So like three points, basically. But it's not in the cards. We can't, cannot get it. Um, but our board is empty. We've built a lot of ships this time. We did better on the tracks without going too deep on militaristic stuff. I think we basically snuck by on the fact that we got three of these skips bot. Uh, that gave us nine workers over the course of the game. Uh, but we do have this one worker left, which we can use uh, down here to gain a gold. That'll be worth an additional point. And then we do the final income. I'm not going to take workers. That doesn't matter. And I'm not going to take these other things other than the gold because I won't. You basically just convert everything to gold at the end. Anyhow. So we did our final income and uh, we get to see who we get all. We, we surpassed him on all of the tracks, it turns out. So we get all of these, which I did not anticipate at all. And then let's uh, let's see. So long ships, including any bonuses. This is our first way that we score points. So we get one uh, 11 17, 23, 28, 34, 39, 51, plus bonuses, which we have fewer of. We only have this bonus, which is worth four points. So we get 55 points from our ships. Okay. Excuse me. We earn points from our buildings. One, two, three, four. So that's 59. We get our Jarls. We recruited three. So that's 62. Uh, progress tracks, we never made it into the point values here, so whatever. Uh, hero and laborer cards. Um, god, I just... We were at, what, 55? 55. No, that doesn't make sense. I, I, I literally forgot immediately. Why do I do this to myself? Okay. 6, 11, 17, 23, 28... 34, 39, 49, 51, 55, 59, 62 is what we were at. I'm an idiot. And then we get 11 points from these. Nine over on our hero cards, two here. So that's 73. And then one victory point per gold, and we have three. So we get uh, 75 we scored 70, or sorry, we scored 83 last time. So uh, we scored eight fewer points. 
and let's see what they scored. They scored the same. We got the like almost the same cards by coincidence. Like I shuffled these and took five out randomly, but they scored 60. So we scored 73 uh, to 60 and we won. Oh, for future you, yeah, 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 it's funny. So I thought about that too. I, I mentioned that earlier when I scored the first one. Uh, I was gonna use the scoring app, but I left my phone over on my desk or somewhere. I don't actually see it on my desk. Not here. <laughs> so I wasn't able to show it off, unfortunately, um, and had to just double check in the rule book. So sucks to suck. But uh, we won 73 points uh, to 60. So that was with two of these nemesis restrictions, right? So I think the two that we got, we dealt these out randomly. We decided to use two. Use Bluestack Blue so I can use an Android app on PC and show it on stream. Yeah, I have that. Uh, I have it set up so that I can I can do the same and can show it on stream. Um, but not you. I used to use Bluestacks and and not anymore. Um, I don't think it's set up on my current uh, like laptop anymore or tablet, I guess. Um, but I can just get the video feed out of the my phone, which is what I was intending to do. But um, in any case, next time, for next time, there's always something new to, to add to stream. This stream, I added, you know, the card cam, which I think might be out of focus. I might have to tweak that. I did it really fast before stream, but that's okay. I didn't use it very much in this game because we're just kind of zoomed in pretty decently here on these cards anyway. And I had configured this so that it was good for slightly larger cards. So it really wasn't that much of an improvement, but nonetheless, I got that added, uh, which felt pretty, pretty okay. And the pro streamer redeem, which was fun. Looks clear, nice, good. Okay, so let's talk about this, uh, this game. So. The Nemesis cards that we didn't use, they were these guys, right? Erling and Halvar. All ships cost one additional worker to construct, and tucking cards under buildings costs one additional gold. So these ones, I think, are worse than the two that we did actually use, right? Um, which were buildings costing a little bit more to construct and paying silver for the hero and laborers. We really didn't have the heroes to use for very much of the game, as we kind of anticipated. We used the laborer literally once. Um, we saved the game by hiring the sailmaker, actually. That, the sailmaker hire was the single best thing that I ever did. But I feel like, you know, if we played with a couple more of these, uh, things would be significantly harder. These ones are really hard, like an additional work, a worker. We just, like that would have severely hurt our score, right? Um, just this alone, the benefits they would have received, they would have won on the raid track. So that would have cost us, you know, six points essentially. And then we would have got at least one fewer ship, probably more than that, or, you know, over the course of the game. You know, definitely. Well, how many ships did we build? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we would have had to find eight spare workers, uh, which seems not likely. And then this one, you know, we, we put five cards under. We would have had to have five additional gold. That, that one more achievable. But I guess overall, when I think about this game and solo play, I think it's cool that solo play doesn't actually require uh, any additional bandwidth to, to figure out and that sort of thing. But um, these Nemesis cards feel... Eh, they're okay, right? They're an interesting way of adding some difficulty, but I feel like, you know, we had one or like even one more of those and our score probably went down by like 20 points. Like they're not very granular, I guess, right? And maybe they don't need to be, um, but it does feel like, uh, I don't know. There's just something about them. They just, they feel like they're interesting, 
but they're kind of like, eh. I don't know. Am I going to want to play this game and try to play with all four of these things and, and see if I can win? Probably not. Uh, and I don't think that would be particularly gratifying, honestly. Um, I think it would be... I don't, I don't know. They just, they just aren't quite doing it for me. Um, but overall, I feel like this game was one I enjoyed. This was definitely not one of my favorite Garp Hill games. Um, it's good. Uh, I also like the fact that we tried something a little bit different and uh, it worked out. Like I didn't go for the militaristic stuff. I didn't get any worker income. We kind of found some ways of skirting that. If we didn't find those skip spot, I think I would have had a much lower score. But overall, we had like some, you know, interesting... Uh, like I played this one quite a bit differently the second time than I played the first time, and we still won. Uh, our score was also a lot closer than I expected it to be. I thought we were going to, you know, do quite a bit less, uh, quite a bit worse overall. Um, so I like the fact that this is quite accessible for solo play. The biggest problem I have with this game, I think, is that I don't think there's enough variability here to make this worth playing more than a couple of times solo. Right. I could never play this game solo again, and I'd be totally okay with that, right? Would I play it solo again? Sure. Am I eager to? Not really. And I think overall, can I show the box? I live primarily in Ecuador as an expat, and getting things shipped here is a nightmare, so I have to bring in my luggage when I visit the States. Space is a premium. Holy, okay. It's very specific. So the box is the same size as, uh, like, um... Uh, you know, well, it's your standard, like, Dominion size box, right? So it's the same as Scholars and Paladins and those other ones. It's not the, you know, a lot of the Garp Hill games, I don't have any handy. I think they're all inside the house, actually. But a lot of the other Garp Hill games are in that smaller box, like, like the size of Hadrian's Wall, this one, right? I do have one handy. God, Hadrian's Wall is so heavy. So a lot of them are more this size, right? And uh, this one is the kind of normal Dominion size. So, unlucky. I'm speaking your thoughts on you. Yeah, so it's like, uh, I think this is kind of my thing with maybe some of the, some of the Garp Hill games. I like them. I love the art style. I like how they're consistent in their setting and iconography. I like how Shem Phillips as a designer, these feel more distinct than I think of other designers that like have a lot of games and like Stefan Feld I mentioned earlier or Rosenberg, right? If you've played one of those games and you play another one, um, they're often really samey. And the Garp Hill games, despite being in the same setting, almost all the Garp Hill games share this setting to some degree. Yet the games are very, like, distinct in their mechanisms. Uh, much more so than I would anticipate from a single designer, right? Because they're almost always just Shem Phillips, right? So, um, yeah, I think my my misgivings with... I, I like... I don't think I've played any Garp Hill games and been like, eh, you know, I don't know, this wasn't for me. But Shipwrights, like, they say on the box here, I was surprised to read this, but they say 60 minutes, right? And I thought, huh, like, I, I mean, it didn't take 60 minutes to play solo because I was narrating my decisions and whatever. But when we were playing this with four players, uh, like, 60 minutes seemed entirely possible, which is very surprising to me for a game that involves drafting, right? That's with a AP prone player. I think 60 minutes totally doable with four players. But I think that puts this in the sort of lighter end of the spectrum for Garp Hill games for me. And all of their lighter games are like, yeah, this is a fun game, but it's just a little too light for me. And there's not enough interest here that I really want to play it a ton more. Like Raiders of the North Sea is totally like that, right? I think Raiders is a really good like gateway game, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a really solid kind of initial worker placement. It's got an interesting gimmick with the the way the board is divided and that sort of thing. Um, but it's like if you if you're generally into games, like I would say I like medium to heavy euros. Those are like that's my jam. 
And I would say Raiders is a game that I could play it once or twice and then never play it again. And I've experienced it and there's not that much more there that I want to try and glean from it. Right? Go right back, Ezra. It was a smaller box. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, especially if, if you, you know, if getting the games there is, is challenging. Uh, small box is a, is a big consideration for sure. Um, that's one of the things I appreciate about all the Garpil games is that most of them, like, they're consistent in theme. They're all, you know, I have a big stack of them. All the smaller ones, all the, all the larger ones, you know. But yeah, anyways, I think this fits closer to Raiders than it does to something to like the South Tigris games or Paladins or something. like those are way heavier games and just by virtue of being heavier there's more there to explore and I'm more likely to play them again whereas this is like you know are there a couple different strategies I could like employ and try here sure totally there are but I don't think that it would be particularly gratifying to try them because I kind of like I've played this now four times and I feel like I've seen most of what this game has to offer. Is there more? Totally there is. Is there an extreme amount more? No, not really. Right? I primarily play on TTS and appreciate Garpil for supporting and providing excellent mods. That's cool. I, I haven't played um, any Garpil game on TTS. Uh, I didn't know that they were generally available, um, but that's awesome. That's great. Um, I find that I have like a love-hate relationship with uh, digital games, and I think that basically uh, I like digital games, I, and I, I like that other people like them a lot, but I've decided like in intentionally like I want to play games on the table here. Uh, on stream and one of the things I've always appreciated about games is like the the tactile qualities of them and when playing in person just the experience of being in the same room with someone and sharing a social experience with them that's uh, something that I think is one of the like really tangible benefits of board games and it's not to say that that can't happen digitally but it, it is not the same right so um, it's cool that they uh, support that so fully though because uh, I feel like you know you can get a lot uh, play a lot of games on TTS but most of them are you know not official and just sort of like some crap that's been hacked together you know yeah I agree that would be my first choice tactile is very important yeah I like it I really something I, I so vividly remember when I was like you know just getting into board games and this was like 20 years ago Maybe not quite 20, but 15 anyway, right? And I just very vividly remember when I went and, uh, like, purchased the first, like, couple of games that I got. Uh, they were from a smaller store that uh, was local that's since gone out of business. But it was just, like, packed to the brim with games. They couldn't fit any more shelving in here and or any more games, right? And... It was like being in a library, especially like an older library. I feel like libraries these days are like big and open and whatever. And I just like, it was like, you're in like almost this dim hallway full of games and it, it smells of cardboard. You know, it had a distinct smell that I can like picture now, years later. Um, and, uh, you know, part of the excitement of the game was like, I remember I bought Agricola. That was one of the first games I ever bought. And it was like physically heavy because it's full of wood and you open it up and it smells of wood and cardboard and like that seems really I don't know it sounds weird to to articulate that but like that's an important part of the experience for me and something that I like sharing with others and like it's satisfying to move the physical pieces in a way that like isn't the same digitally and I'm like a super tech nerd like you know I, I like we're early adopters of VR and like, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. Like I bought the first Vive, still have it actually. And uh, you know, like I, I love video games, but it's not the same. So. Anyhow, that was fun. Um, I liked this game. I'm really glad I played it. I think this is another win from Garp Hill. Uh, I think that overall it's a, uh, a, a, a excellent game but it's one that 
probably I'm not going to play. I, I don't see myself playing this again very much, right? Um, so uh, let's let's write this down here. We got shipwrights of the North Sea. And I think that this is is probably a 7 out of 10 for me. Uh, is this a bad game? No. Is this an excellent game? Yeah, I think it might be. And if it had a little bit more replayability, I think that this would be like a, like, you know, an easy 9 out of 10. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to say it. An expansion could could really add to this game and make it, like, quite a bit better. But... Did you back the all on board VR Kickstarter? No, I did not. Um, what is the date today? April 14th. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, I'm I'm reluctant to say this because I've actually been trying to like play all the Garpill games. Uh, I think there's only two that I own that I haven't played now, and there's Legacy of You. Uh, but uh, I've been trying to like play them all. And one of the things that's interesting, when you go look at the Garpill games, like imagine you had none, and it's like, hey, I want to like try all of these things. A lot of the games have like two, three expansions. And then things like Rune Saga and Tome Saga that give you like ways to like you know, play across multiple games. They essentially are, functionally are expansions for, you know, multiple games simultaneously. And it's just like, shit, that's a lot, right? So, um, I feel like, I feel slightly hesitant to say that because I own basically all the Garpill games and I don't own any expansions for them. Most of them are totally good on their own. And, uh, you know, anyway. Maybe that's the lighter, lighter Garp Hills. The lighter ones? I, I think that's just showing my preferences. I would just prefer a slightly heavier, heavier game, and maybe the expansion adds that. If there was a couple more types of character here, or, you know, whatever. Some other element that could, you know, give me a little more opportunity cost turn to turn, I'd be much more interesting, much more interested in trying this again. But anyhow, that said, I think it's time to wrap up. Uh, let's find a place to raid. Raiding on Sundays is always weird. There's Time Roller. We were going to roll Time Roll. We were going to raid Time Roller last time, rather. And then we didn't because, or wait, we did. We decided at the last minute to raid Time Roller. And then he was raiding out right away. Or was that two weeks ago? It might have been two weeks ago. The board game category is just so thin on Sun. I mean, it's thin all the time, but especially on uh, Sundays. All right, so what do we got? We got, let's read board game in Mama. Haven't done that in a while. Uh, looks like, uh, TLN Extra Life stuff going on. That's cool. That's a, that's, a, that's a thing we can support. Let's do that. That's where we'll raid. I think she has a TLN going. Yeah, I think so as well. And I think that... Uh, whatever. I don't remember the last time we raided Board Game and Mama. Finishing or one of the last ones? Ooh. Yeah, you know what? She might be finishing because it's, it's probably a two-hour slot and she was, what, an hour and 50 in? Whatever. We'll just raid her anyway. You know what? We raid Time Roller like 99% of the time because he's always on on Sundays and like it just it just works out kind of coincidental coincidentally, right? Um, so let's raid Board Gaming Mama. Been a, a really long time since we've done that. Let's see if the raid command actually works. It did. Weird. I'm surprised. Thanks so much for being here today. Um, what have I got to tell you guys real quick? Uh, this coming Wednesday, Sarah and I are going to try Twilight Inscription again. So that'll be just on YouTube, uh, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Mountain. And then I will be back next Sunday. And I have, I, I've been, I think I might try a heavier game. 
but um, I'm not sure. So I got to figure out what that's going to be. Per usual, I'll post the schedule on the Discord uh, this coming Monday. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for being here. It was nice to talk to you guys about the Garp Hill stuff. He's always on. It's true. It's true. Hey, Trombone, you caught us at the very last second here. Anyways, thanks so much for being here, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.